Under a searing hot sun in Austin, Texas, the Longhorns embark on the reconstruction of its once impervious pride. It takes one heartbeat. We're not going to talk about the end. We're going to talk about the beginning. Like it's our first day. Running back, tight ends, O line. Like it's our first year. Push it up. Here we go. And we're going to rebuild this thing brick by brick. Last year, things didn't end like we wanted them to. Oh, my goodness. When you think it can't get any worse for the Longhorns, it does. So we're going to take things one day at a time. Play your butt off in practice. Find the ball, find the ball, find the ball. Focus and fundamentals. The mortar holding it together. Individually, bricks are strong, but stacked together, they can't be shaken. The clash of the pads, the sweat dripping down your brow on a hot day. Rice will be a force motivated to try to spoil our great season. You deserve to be number one, and that's what you are. Yeah! The winning tradition of the Texas Longhorns will not be entrusted to the weak or the timid. So put your horns in the air. It's a new era of Texas football, and we're working at this thing hard day by day, game by game, and brick by brick. And it is nice to be back to the matters on the field after some of the contentious moments and tumult that have existed off the field in the Universal College football during the last several weeks and months. Now we get to talk at Cunningham about what exists <laughs> between the four lines on the field. I spent a lot of time in the studio this offseason talking about Oregon and their problems and LSU and their problems of late. In Texas, all they did during this time was lock their doors and try to fix their problems. I get a sense things are going to be okay for the Longhorns this season with some of the young talent they have, especially at wide receiver. Texas won the toss, deferring to the second half. Rice will receive. And we are underway. Charles Ross on the kickoff return. We haven't returned one. In decades, you'd have to go back to 1984 to look at the last time Rice returned a kick for a touchdown, and he takes it out to just beyond the 30-yard line. A 27-yard kickoff return. That's where Taylor McCarg, <coughs> excuse me, Taylor McCarg will take over the reins of the offense. This guy's very athletic. Had a couple of shoulder injuries last year. Started against Texas in the first ball game. Didn't quite have the weapons he has now. Has a couple of receivers, especially Randy Kitchens, who can really run. Clark injured last a year for eight games. Wears back quick three-step drop. Completes the first pass of the game out to the 40-yard line to Tyler Smith, picking up eight. As we take a look at some of the impact players today, Ed. Uh, for Rice, uh, Sam McGuffey, uh, just one of the fastest, most explosive backs in Conference USA. Randy Kitchen just mission, missed, uh, mentioned him. Big guy, 6'3", 240. Kenny Vaccaro is a guy that Manny Diaz is going to move all over the field from safety. He'll come down in the box and blitz as well. A very aggressive, good tackle. Taylor McCard last year completed 57% of his passes. High snap. Loose ball. And Rice recovers it. Tyler Smith pounced on the loose ball. But it's going to be a big loss. Setting up third and long for the Owls. Deshaun Carrington snatching up the loose pill. A loss of 14 as we look at the backs and receivers. We talked about McGuffey and his game-breaking ability. He led the team in receiving yards and rushing yards a season ago. Third and 16. And interestingly enough, Sam McGuffey not on the field here in third and long. Into the boundary. Pass complete, but nowhere to go for Tyler Smith. He was hit immediately on the play. And it'll be fourth down, a quick three and out on the first series for Texas's defense. What does it mean for them? Does that help confidence-wise? Well, what helps there is that's one of the young corners, Carrington Bindham, a sophomore that they're expecting a lot out of. And Bindham did a nice job recognizing the slow developing screen. And for Diaz, got to feel good. Got a little bit of a break with a snap that should have been handled by McCard. But a little bit of a grin on his face. Not a bad start, three and out. 
Jackson Shipley back there perched at the 31 yard line of Longhorns. Now Martins, an all conference punter, gets off a beautiful high spiral. Shipley with a fair catch all the way back at his own 20 yard line. And that's what will be first down and 10 for ha perhaps the most scrutinized, criticized player since Thanksgiving of last year in burnt orange and white. Garrett Gilbert, the starting quarterback, completed 59% of his passes last year, Ed, but he threw 17 picks. That's all anyone seems to remember. And, and one of the things that I noticed right away when I was at practice on Thursday was how much better he is mechanically. Let's, let's watch over the course of the ball game. How much better his footwork will show you some video from last year, but Brian Harson has done a masterful job getting his feet better. Whitaker and Johnson in the offset eye. Behind Gilbert, this is Whitaker on the toss. And Fozzie Whitaker hit immediately at the 20-yard line by Cameron Wasu. Let's take a look at our impact players, Ed. Well, Jackson Shipley, of course, brother of Jordan, came in right as a true freshman and looks a lot like his brother Jordan. Very quick, great hands. Uh, and will also maybe run some wildcat. Mason Walter is a guy that broke his foot a couple of years ago, played last year. He, he's the leader up front. They're going to need him to roll off. And Scott Solomon, a guy who also broke his foot, but right before this game last year back, this is an NFL quality defensive lineman. It's going to be Whitaker again between the tackles this time. It'll be third down and about eight to go. Justin Allen making the stop on the play. We're going to see a lot of different formations by Texas, right? You know, Brian Harson comes from Boise State, and it's funny all week everyone's saying, oh, you know, that crazy system they run at Boise State. It's not a crazy system. <laughs> they, they have a bunch of different personnel that come in. They do a lot of shifts in motion that try to make the defense miss their assignments. But this is a very basic offense here. Now a chance to see some of that technique we were talking about with the quarterback. Third and eight, Gilbert out of the shotgun here. And Galbert, Darren Gilbert, incomplete. No flag on the play intended for Jackson Shipley. Allen in on the coverage, and it's a three and out for Texas offensively. One thing right from the start, though, great protection by the offensive line. You know, Gilbert took a lot of heat last year, and we were talking to Mason Walters yesterday. He said, you know, he had a subpar season, but so did I, but nobody talks about the right guard. That time, terrific protection, uh, and not a terrible throw. Ball was a little outside and low, but that's where Shipley was. Justin Tucker punting, averaged a little over 42 yards per punt. He'll roll out and do that directional kicking. This is Xavier Webb on the return, and he's brought down immediately. At right around the 35 yard line. So both teams with a couple of three and outs to begin the game. A 46 yard punt, three on the return. Horns trying to hook them when we come back. Well, as the state struggles with the worst one year drought in its history, Austin has seen 70 days and counting without a form of measurable precipitation. Temperatures over 100 degrees, breaking the 86 year old record for most triple digit days in the city. The average temperature during Texas's 22-day fall camp was, get this, folks, 104 degrees at Cunningham, with 11 days seeing over 105 degrees. I'm sweating just talking about it. McGard rears back, and it's incomplete at the 40-yard line. Broken up nicely by Kenny Vaccaro, one of the leaders there in the secondary. You know, one of the things that Matt Brown does that I think is very smart with his team, and I, you know, when I was playing for the Arizona Cardinals under Buddy Ryan, that was old school. It was 115 degrees. We were out there every day. But they have a bubble here. Granted, it's not 70 degrees inside, but they don't <laughs> practice outside a lot, and they save the legs of these guys. That's pass complete. Out beyond the 40. Out the 41 yard line, number 82, the tight end, Luke Wilson. A big part of what they like to do a six yard gain. It's still warm inside that bubble. Well, but they get them out of the sun. It is 15 or 20 degrees cooler than outside. And they talked to their medical personnel and they said, get them out in the heat once or twice so they feel it. But then you've got to get them inside. They, you just, you're going to harm their bodies. You're going to break them down in a way that's not good for them going into the season. So they're very new school here at Texas with how they deal with the heat. Yeah, the thinking with hydration has certainly come a long way in the last decade or so. Third and three. The guard fires complete right at the first down marker, depending on the spot. It looks like Randy Kitchens is going to have enough for the first down. Picked up about four. And they're going to give him the first down. Kitchens, touchdown catch last year against Texas. That was a really nice throw by McCart. He's got a very nice 
crisp short motion the ball gets out in a hurry. Carr keeps it himself. Now tosses it. And a great decision to first down. Tyler Smith. As the defense gets to him a little bit too late. Gideon making the stop as we take a look at that Texas defense brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Who are the key guys up there, Ed? Jackson Jeffcoat's a young man, sophomore, had had a really good beginning last year. They need the light bulb to come on. Keenan Robinson's really turned into a vocal leader. He wasn't much of that coming in this year. Phillips, Bindham, and then we talked about Kerrigan, of course, Gideon, young man who started every game since he got here as a freshman, now a senior. A couple of sophomores on the corner are going to be tested throughout the course of an arduous season. A guard completes it to Kitchens. And a nice block out there on the edge over the 40 down to the 38. A pickup of five on the play. Dante Moore with a nice block out there. And the Rice Owls a little off re rhythm here. on Yeah, McCart really is getting into a nice rhythm. But he's going to throw it out to his right. And then watch the receiver, 81, Dante Moore, having to battle there with Bindham. Excellent job. Those hands are inside. They're not going to call holding. Guard throws it up. And that one over the head of the intended receiver on the play, Dante Moore. Who threw that block just a few moments ago. Let's talk about the quarterback here. Taylor McGarg, he's a somewhat of a local product. Cedar Park, Texas said that he was going to have about 100 or so supporters here today. <laughs> That's a lot of tickets. He used to come to this stadium as a young man. Kind of a big deal for him. A little bit of contact and a flag thrown on the play as Randy Kitchens was being defended maybe a little too aggressively by Bindham. Yeah, but I think they need to wave this off for an uncatchable. I mean, Kitchens, to me, looked like he's the one. Kitchens looked like he's the one who sought out the contact with Bindham. And in college football, you can make contact at any part of the field until the ball is thrown. I think that's the difference. But watch Kitchens. He's the one who goes. I, well, I don't know. He had good position. I don't. I don't think that that's pass interference. But a, but, but a nice break for Rice to pick up a first down. First and ten, just inside the 25. Second drive of the ball game for the Owls. Carr keeps it himself. Gains about seven, setting up a second down and three. And Samantha, a little bit of news on the Texas side of the field. What's up? Yeah, some breaking news on this Texas defense. Sophomore defensive tackle Ashton Dorsey has been suspended for today's game with Rice due to a violation of team rules. Don't have any details other than that. That means Chris Whaley's going to get more time out of there. Guys, this is a big deal because depth in this kind of heat, this sort of weather is a huge issue. And next man up for now, Samantha. Second down and two. Guard that one dangerously thrown into coverage and broken up nicely by Hicks. The third down and two coming up now. Well, and you saw at that time, you saw the defense. A lot of offenses in college football now, they see what the defense is doing, then they look to the sideline, they get a call from upstairs. Well, we were talking to Manny Diaz yesterday, he said, It really hurts my feelings to let the offense just do whatever they want. So he, because of his ability to communicate in very short bursts, able to change his defense and that times Hicks read it perfectly now I, I, if I'm Rice I've got to think about some kind of draw play here I just get something with three or four yards handed off to Eddington nowhere to go and it's going to be a loss all the way back to about the 25 Randall and Bindham making the stop for Manny Diaz the new defensive coordinator that's a loss of about eight on the play and it'll be fourth down coming up now. Well, and here's just such a crazy look. Watch, this is a three-man front. And the, the uh, Keiston Randall goes almost completely unblocked. That was a bad job by left guard Davon Allen getting down there on time. I think he was a little late. But uh, you saw the overload to the right side of Texas's defense. Very difficult to read that as a quarterback. Ed from 42 yards out, Chris Boswell, who was 11 of 17 a year ago. 
And he knocks this one through. The Rice Owls get on the board first. What does that do for their confidence? Exactly what they did last year. They went up 3-0. I think it's huge for Dale, uh, David uh, Bailiff's crew to go up 3-0. Couple of mistakes. They got a little bit of a break, but here they sit. Got to leave. The Owls trying to crash the party here. They're more than just a party ornament. 3-0 when we come back to Austin. Texas football on the Longhorn Network is brought to you by HEB. For all your game day needs, no store does more than HEB. And Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Austin, Texas, the state capital of Texas and Rice by virtue of the 10-play 41-yard drive, a 41-yard field goal, leading 3 to nothing. This is a community that has been anxiously waiting to see what this year's edition of the Longhorns would look like at Cunningham, shrouded in mystery. How much buzzkill is there that they trail 3 to nothing right now? I would imagine there's a few people in the stands thinking, uh-oh, here we go again. But I, I just think it's too early. I do think, more importantly, I, th I don't think this is going to get Texas down as much as I think it helps Rice's confidence coming in. So I think Texas is going to be fine, uh, but I think the three-point lead right now, for if I'm Rice, it's a pretty big deal. Into the end zone, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line. Malcolm Brown, the highly touted, pardon me, Quandry Diggs, the sophomore, pardon me, the freshman coming back out. As we take a look at the offensive Backs and receivers, the lineup sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Whitaker has really done a great job in the weight room under their new strength and conditioning coach. Putting his body back together. Davis, one of their deep threats. And up front, Ed, you played the position. What do you make of their offensive line? They've just got to get a lot better. They, they got soft over the last few years, and one of the hires I thought that was great that Mac Brown made was Stacey Searles, who's an offensive lineman from back. Played at Auburn, coached at LSU, coached at Georgia. Went and got in uh, from Georgia, and I think that was a great high. This pass complete to Whitaker out of the backfield, and Fozzie Whitaker picks up the first first down of the season for the Texas Longhorns, and you can almost hear collectively a little bit of an exhale out there. <laughs> and we were visiting with Brian Harson, the new co-offensive coordinator and, and quarterbacks coach. Of course, he shares the duty with Major Applewhite, who's a holdover uh, from last year's staff, but he was talking about Fozzie Whitaker, and you know, a young man who's been injured a lot during his career. And he said, even with these young guys, these five-star guys that are coming in, Fozzie's going to have a position because of that. He can catch the ball. He'll always have a job for us. First down and 10. Baker again between the tackles this time, put his hat down and got rocked. Stop made by Justin Allen, but it's going to be second down at about six to go. You know, and, and just kind of talking about Brian Harson, I was so impressed on Wednesday. I believe we may have had a flag, didn't we? But uh, I was so impressed with him on the field. Blocking ball to waste. The number 18 of the offense. 15-yard penalty and replay first down. You get uh, DJ Grant for blocking below the waist. But I was so impressed with Brian Harson on the practice field. Um, he just has that presence about him. They went to special teams and the quarterbacks were kind of figuring out what to do. And he was down in the end zone ready to do some drills, throwing into baskets. And he just got him around and said, guys, how many times have I told you special team sprint to me? We've got work to do. Just kind of a new atmosphere around the offense. And uh, remember, this is a guy, go back to 2006, called all of those plays in the upset of Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl. So he knows a thing or two about calling plays. We're, we're waiting for those trick plays. Those are going to be fun when they finally get unveiled. Whitaker, the only back, a play fake. Gilbert going up top, has a man wide open. Davis. Mike Davis got in behind Chris Jammer. And it's a first down, Texas. Well, pretty good job. A little bit of a play fake. Brought the safeties down. A little pressure there. But able to get it off, and you just you can't throw any bar and, and the ball any better. And Davis, a guy who last year the coaches knew would give him some speed, but because of the struggles on offense and an injury to Davis, they weren't able to uncork him. They were there. First and ten after the 56-yard gain. Whitaker tripped up in the backfield. Down to the 24-yard line. 
Tell me about Gilbert and what kind of mechanical differences you see with him this year. Well, when you go back to last year, there's a couple of different things. Here he takes a false step against Kansas State, right? Here, you'll see how his, his foot jams into the ground, but he doesn't throw it. So now, watch his left foot slide off to the side. He's got nothing to throw the ball on. Of course, throws interception. Now, watch his shoulders as he rolls out. His left shoulder is actually vertical and right into the line of scrimmage. He's got to open that left shoulder up some, and that's one of the drills that Harson was doing the other day, was getting those shoulders turned a little bit more. Second and seven completes this pass. Whitaker again stopped up at about the 22-yard line by Wasu. What does he look like now in terms of his motion? So they worked a ton on his footwork, but they also worked on lowering the ball a little bit. Such a better job. Did you notice how he didn't even really stride into that ball? It was more of a pivot and throw. That was one thing that Brian Harson really looked at was we just saw that against Kansas State last year. He had a tendency to overstride. It's it's almost like if you've ever seen a pitcher come off the mound and fall backwards. You, you just never see that. So they've been working hard. That deep throw there, his footwork looked so much better than it did almost the entire season 2010. Third and five. Tried to thread it in there, but incomplete intended once again for Davis. This time Jammer was there to break it up. So it's fourth and five, and they're within field goal range for Justin Tucker who can go, we're told by Mac Brown, all the way out to about 50 yards. He has a career long of 51. And uh, I noticed this in practice the other day. Must be a fan of the Oregon Ducks. Check out his footwear. <laughs> Different color scheme. It came off his foot well anyway. I guess it doesn't matter, Ed. A 39-yard field goal good, nodding the game at three apiece. A lot of luminaries from the Longhorns passed on hand, not necessarily football either. What do you do during your summer vacation? Hey, all basketball guys want to play football, right? That is not a spiral. <laughs> that is not a spiral. <laughs> Hey, folks, join host Lowell Galindo for game plan with Mac Brown Thursday nights on the Longhorn Network for unprecedented access to Coach Brown and the most up-to-date Texas football news. Game plan with Mac Brown on the Longhorn Network Thursdays at 7 o'clock Central. Put your eyes on Texas. Well, you know, that face there, that's a 5-7 and seven face. <laughs> they, they need to get a 2011 <laughs> face yeah. for Mac. We that's... need to turn that upside down <laughs> at the corners yeah. there. So far, we're tied at 3. Talk about all access. They peeked in on our production meetings a little bit with the coaching staff. And, and now for Rice, you know, you're sitting here at 3-3 with 431 left in the first. McCarg looked pretty good in that last series. They, they, they take chances occasionally. They're not a deep ball throwing team. I would see maybe a little play action and see if you can't pop a big one here if you're Rice. At the five-yard line, this is Charles Ross. Ross found an alley and a great return by Ross all the way out near midfield where he's brought down by Bindham. So the Owls will start with great field position and now for today's LonghornNetwork.com poll question. Who will be the Longhorns leading rusher tonight? Log on to LonghornNetwork.com to cast your vote. There's Ron Brown, Gilbert or Whitaker. I'm going with DJ Monroe. Going off the menu. He's going off the menu. He's going to hit about a 60-yard reverse. Other. He, okay. They've got a special package for him. He can really scoot. So I'm going off the menu. There. Right. Car got to the shotgun. Charles Ross in the backfield behind him. Out of the side of him. Ross on the handoff. That's up a second down at about five to go. You know, one of the things that uh, Manny Diaz does is, is so many multiple types of defenses, but this is a very veteran offensive line for Rice. Of course, we know Rice, one of the best academic institutions in the country, all of the world, actually. So these are bright young men with a lot of starts. And right now, other than when we saw Keaston Randall run a little bit free, we haven't seen a bunch of bodies coming free with all the pressure and different looks that Texas is giving Rice. Speaking of different looks, Ed, for the first time today, Sam McGuffey on the field. And he takes the handoff with that 10.600 meter speed. And he's chopped down near the first down at about the 42-yard line by Kenny Vaccaro. 
How much of a game changer is McGuffey? Well, last year he was the only guy who could run with guys on Texas, and you can just see that speed. Good job where he ducked inside. Watch the inside slot receiver, Vance McDonald, 6'5", 260. Walls his guy in. It was a nice little duck and bounce out. Sometimes, though, they want him to calm down a little bit, take it up a seam, because he seems to always, with that speed, want to bounce it outside. First and ten. He got enough for the first down. Charles Ross back in the ball game. Texas coming with a little heat. And McCarg throws it way out of bounds. And a late flag now on the play. Acho was in there. One of the leaders. A personal foul by number 52, the office. Mm. That's the center, Keyshawn Carrington. And here's this offensive line to blitz right up the middle. A little bit late coming off on the right guard, but that is, uh, yeah, that, that's just a bad play by Carrington. You see it right there at the end. Play's gone. You just, you can't make that mistake. David Bayless, Bayless a defensive lineman by trade in college at Texas State. Man, you just can't hurt yourself sitting here 3-3 against Texas when you got a few things going. Second and 25. Bar completes it. And out to the 47-yard line. That's Vance McDonald. Of course, we've been talking a lot about uh, Texas and their new staff. New offensive staff as uh, David Beatty left to go back to Kansas, who's the offensive coordinator, and John Reagan calling his very first FBS-level college football game on offense today. Looking at a third and long here, 21 to go. But for the most part, the Owls have had a huge advantage in time of possession early. And if you're Texas, you're thinking screen here. Uh, I just don't see this ball being thrown more than five or ten yards, so be ready for some type of screen. Got those huge receivers. A big target complete there at the 45 yard line. That was Luke Wilson, the 6'5 junior from Canada, run down by Vaccaro. And it's both sides of the ledger where we actually see receivers uh, as big as 6'5. You know, yeah, and, and I, I like what Rice is doing here right now. They're going for it on fourth down. I, I like the aggressive call. Let's see if. I think you got to throw a fade. Maybe you've got to get something beyond the sticks. It's fourth down, so fourth and twelve. Got to get all the way to the thirty-two. And now a pooch punt by McGard. Oh boy, they didn't really gain much field position in that. Yeah, yeah, and, and and that's why I didn't like the didn't mind them going on fourth. When you get over the fifty, if you punt it into the end zone. If you're down around the 30, that was probably a little long. Now I understand they were going with the pooch kick, which I think is a great call, but unfortunately, bad execution. What would have made that a win for them? How far downfield? Inside the 20. I think it, it, you got to get inside the 15 for me to consider a punt when you're on. Yeah, they were probably a little far, but once you get to about the 40, if you're not dropping the ball inside the 15, what's the difference? Just boot it into the end zone and get it to the 20. Derek Gilbert back on the field. Joe Bergeron in the backfield now. All different backs for the Longhorns. We'll get a look at this afternoon. Empty formation and Gilbert incomplete. Threw it a little bit low intended for Mike Davis. It was closely covered by Philip Gaines on the play. It'll be second and ten. Rice could not cover this well last year. This is so much better coverage the Longhorns are dealing with a very young receiving core still trying to learn some of their routes but right now David Bale of secondary coordinated by uh, Chuck Driesbach a guy who's been around the block a million times they brought in a new cornerback coach this year and right now the coverage has been really good except for that one long ball to Davis second and ten play fake by Gilbert given time and batted away nicely at the last moment once again Philip Gaines there intended for Mike Davis. It almost appeared as if, although Gaines got a hand in there, it might have gone off of Davis's shoulder pad. Either way, third and long coming up. Gaines, a good tall corner at 6'1", 185. Did a nice job of track, putting that left hand in front of him. And this was a defense last year. Of course, they're missing their signal caller right now. And Travis Bradshaw, a young man who had to retire from football with a broken neck during camp. So. 
Other than that long throw to, to Davis, been pretty sound. Third and ten, Gilbert out of heat. And incomplete. Intended for Darius White. And the Longhorns will have to punt. You know, Brian Harson, the offensive coordinator, had told us during our meetings, says, you know, Garrett Gilbert is great in practice and in the drills. It's just mentally now he's got to turn it loose in the games. And that reminds me of the immortal quote of Mike Tyson who said, hey, everyone's got a game plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. And, th and that was part of the problem. You cannot put it all on Garrett Gilbert last year but all of them were getting punched in the mouth and they were young some of them very inexperienced and they didn't handle it very well Gilbert is just his last four a fair catch called it a fumble the Longhorns recover it deep in Rice territory at the 20 yard line Xavier Webb fumble the ball and it's Texas football So many times early in the season, Ed, you see these kind of miscues. Webb does a nice job of making the fair catch signal, goes down, which is something you teach, and it just went right through his basket. You know, you make a basket with your arms, and you've got to get those elbows as close together as possible, but a huge turnover for Rice. And, you know, the punter should take all the credit. It was a perfect... Well, wait a minute. No, <laughs> Here's a handoff to Whitaker. Ended head over heels down at the 16 yard line. Justin Allen making the stop on the play and uh, gain of about four, setting up second down and six. How diversified has Texas looked so far early in this game? They, very vanilla, quite frankly, and, and I understand why. It's the first game for Harson calling. You've got a lot of young guys, including a quarterback who had his confidence shaken badly last year. They're pretty vanilla, but I, I completely get it. Whitaker taking a direct snap here, and the Wildcat keeps it himself. And just as Ed, you were saying that they were vanilla, they bring out a little bit of a wrinkle there. A six-yard yeah. gain on the play. Well, and, and this is this offensive line getting some push. Watch the left side of this offensive line working a little bit of a double team at the point of attack. Great push by the uh, left tackle there, Trey Allen. Just absolutely knocked the uh, defensive lineman back and the left guard David Snow then went up to the second level of the linebacker. That was a good point of block, uh, point of attack block. First and goal. DJ Monroe in the ball game. Brought down at the three yard line. DJ Monroe comes into the ball game for the first time, gets a touch. That's the guy off the menu that you were talking about, right? Well, and that was another Wildcat. Jackson Shipley comes in. They do a fake, they do a handoff to Whitaker, back to Monroe. Now Shipley goes out and blocks, and Shipley, a guy, as we come to the end of the first quarter, they're talking about brick by brick around here. That's a pretty good brick to have because Brian Harson said, I think he can do some wildcat, and now you see what he saw. Guy who handles the ball very well. And Harson starting to open up his little bag of tricks as the first 15 minutes are in the books. Under the oppressive heat here in Austin, Texas, we're tied at three at Texas Memorial Stadium. Back with more right after this. Longhorns trying to build it back brick by brick and going back to last year at Cunningham as we look at second and four goal uh, goal and four to go um, was last year a mirage or how much of it was real I thought it was very real you know I thought again Mac Brown was talking about not able to get over that loss to Alabama and uh, things had kind of gotten a little in cruise control and he admitted that but I thought it was real but I, I think he had, he made the right adjustments to uh, make it a one-year real deal, not a multi-year real deal. Second and goal. Right up the middle, this is Cody Johnson, their short yardage guy, and he carries a load at 5'11", 252. Third and goal. So here you go, third and goal. You've got to figure this is four-down territory. So I would think Gilbert runs better than people think. They've been working very hard on his rollout. Wouldn't be surprised here if this is not. They probably will pound it, but uh, wouldn't be surprised with a play-action rollout. 
Johnson the deep back in the offset eye. Johnson with the carry and Texas with its first touchdown of the new season and the Brian Harson era. Well, you got a 250 pound fullback tailback. They run a little bit of a power. That was actually good defense at the point of attack by Rice. There was two people penetrating right where the block, uh, where the run was going. But a nice job of spinning off of that to uh, finish the run for a touchdown. For Johnson, his 31st career rushing touchdown. The extra point by Justin Tucker, good. And the Longhorns lead by seven. Just underway here in the second quarter of play. Mark Jones along with Ed Cunningham, the season opener. And the 93rd chapter of Rice versus Texas. And Texas trying to flip the script a little bit from a season ago. They began 2010 with three straight wins. Rice, Wyoming, and Texas Tech. It was the eighth time during the Mac Brown era that Texas had started 3-0. But then trouble coming in big amounts. Losses at home against Baylor. Iowa State really signaling the alarm. They finished up two and five in the Big 12 South and several changes, big changes, significant changes in the coaching staff. You know, and a lot of people have talked about a lot of these changes, but you know, a huge one right here is on, on a defensive coaching staff. Brian Harson, of course, charting what they did on the last one, but Benny Wiley, a guy that came in, Jeff Madden had become, he, he had too many sports to cover. So they bring Benny Wiley in as the head strength coach for football. And Fozzie Whitaker, I think, is Exhibit A. I, I have never seen that young man so fit and chiseled and uh, changed the attitude quite a bit with these guys during the offseason. Ross at the goal line. Takes it out to the 19. Exactly how much difference can a strength and conditioning coach make to a team? Well, it's not all that about what happens, I guess, in the weight room but on the field as well this was the scene pregame you know you hear the 20 hour rule where coaches can't be with players more than 20 hours a week well that does not count your strength and conditioning coach and I think you can make an argument and a lot of coaches would make this argument he's actually the most important coach on your staff because he's with your young men not only while they're training but he can become a mentor to a lot of them as well and Benny seems like that type of gentleman who a lot of guys will entrust some information and get to know and, and really be a guy that they can go to. On first and ten. Nice run by Jeremy Editing. It's second and five coming up downstairs to Samantha for more. First time I met Benny Wiley was at practice. It was about 110 degrees, and he was in a full sweat suit, sweat suit, sweating through his clothing. I asked him later, Coach, why do you do that? Are you just trying to lose weight or something? He's already pretty ripped out there. He said, I'm trying to encourage them to play hard no matter what the circumstances. It's all about mentality, and he wants them to know he's right there with them. Yes, yeah, Samantha, the Longhorns seem to have really bought into what he's selling. A pickup of seven on the play on the catch by Vance McDonald, but there's a flag down as well. Yeah, I think they're going to get Dante Moore holding. There was no foul for holding. The blocker overpowered the man he was blocking. <laughs> Pretty good explanation yeah. there. Coach Bailiff of uh, Rice uh, in his first four years led Rice to the first bowl victory in 50 years at Rice University in Houston. First two years he went to well, three and nine and then ten and three. In the second year they went to the Texas Bowl and won that game. And after that it was a two and ten followed by last year's four and eight season. With the possession right now. And nowhere to go. McGuffey throws it and completes it. Wow, what a play caught by Vance McDonald. I'm not sure they drew it up that way. Yet. Well, no, this was, it, you know, it's funny. When it, when the play started falling apart, I looked downfield and I saw two receivers streaking. So I said <laughs> they wouldn't be doing that if this were a reverse. So this was set up. Oh, you can see. Yeah, you, you saw the receivers there as they came off. They, they, they were stalking, and that's what you do. You, you act like you're stopping. But what an excellent job by McGuffey able to heave that one up. 
15 yard gain and a first down. And Rice calling a timeout. Well, David Bailiff with a few tricks of his own in his staff. Back with more right after this. The unofficial slogan for Austin is keep Austin weird. Okay, so along those lines, last week they celebrated the seventh annual Bat Fest music and viewing the city's 1.5 million bats. That's right. Now, since the 1980s, tourists gather at sunset to watch a curtain of bats emerge from the Congress Street Bridge here in town every evening during the summer. Ed, I've watched enough Animal Planet <laughs> to not really dig that kind of thing, but hey, if you want to try that out, you know, go ahead. They're, they're not eating people. So you're okay. <laughs> they're Mexican free-tailed bats. 250 tons of insects a night they eat. Wow. Sounds now like they, you did a little research, well, bro. No, well, they need to re-engineer. They need to do some engineering on those bats and see if they can eat the heat. <laughs> okay. 250 tons of moths. <laughs> that pass on the money, but incomplete intended for Vance McDonald. McDonald is a player who has been red hot for Rice going back to the end of last season. Actually had five touchdowns in the last three games to close out last year. And McDonald, one of those big receivers for Rice, 6'5", 260 pounds, a converted tight end. Uh, we were talking to John Reagan, the new offensive coordinator, since he kind of misses mixing it up around the line of scrimmage, but he's brought the toughness of that position out to the receivers. Second and ten. Boy, they're going to burn another oh, timeout. That's, that's bad. Just too much confusion. You, you can't overthink it. You know, sometimes those offenses where what's happening is the offense goes up and lines up. They look at the defense, and then John Reagan, the offensive coordinator, may send down another play, and they make adjustments. He also works with Larry Edmondson, his pass game coordinator. But uh, to take – there's John Reagan there. But to take uh, another timeout here – uh, in, in a tight game, you're driving 13 minutes left. That's a that's a little bit of a mistake. You don't want to have to burn that timeout just because you're trying to move. That's Larry Edmondson there to his left with the glasses on his nose, who works a lot with the receivers. But uh, boy, that's a bummer to burn yeah. that for Rice. Hey, folks! After the game, stick around on the Longhorn Network for Texas Game Day Final to get all the post-game analysis, highlights, and look ahead at next week's game against BYU. Texas Game Day Final on the Longhorn Network tonight at 10 o'clock central time and BYU got a big win on a defensive touchdown wow. what a in finish. Oxford Mississippi today second and ten coming up see what Manny Diaz his defense dials up here pass complete at about the 49 yard line to Michael Patterson gain of five on the play it'll be third down coming up and uh, boy we welcome you into another college football season Ed what a relief we referred to it a little <laughs> bit earlier to forget about some of the probationary matters and talk about what's happening on the yeah, field. Yeah it's gotten a little old you know I think uh, we, we have to talk about these things that we have to make a lot of changes in college football but I'm glad we can get back onto the field and start to see these teams that like Rice are much improved over last year. Third and five and unable to convert it'll be fourth down. And as we look uh, forward, uh, what, what kind of things do you anticipate really getting your eyes on in the upcoming season? You know, for Texas, being at practice and seeing their young players, I think this is a team of a few things break their way, could start to get into the mix in the Big 12. I still think Oklahoma's probably the class. For Rice, looking forward to the Conference USA, most people have them picked about fourth in the West. I think they're going to surprise some people. I don't know that they're better than SMU. I don't know that they're better than Houston. But I think they're as good as Tulsa. And if things break, they may make some noise. This is a much better Rice Owl team than it was last year. Right now down by seven on fourth down punting. Andrew Diggs signals for the fair catch. And he'll come back out to the 20-yard line. 12-17 to go in the first half. A 49-yard punt. Nothing on the return by the All-Conference USA selection. Back with Garrett Gilbert at the range of the offense after this. Texas football on the Longhorn Network is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And Taco Cabana. Join us for a happy hour every day, 4 to 7 p.m. A warm evening here in Austin, Texas, and here's what's happening now. Garrett Gilbert, the starting quarterback, lost the job after the summer scrimmage and regained it. 
Started three for four, but since that time has missed on his last four. Here's what's coming up ahead. We'll take a look at Texas's schedule. It seems to be a very auspicious one for them, potentially. On first and ten from their own 20. Bergeron into the boundary gets about four to be second down and six. You know, uh, Bergeron was a, a two or three star recruit, of course, in a five star system. And the guy who was coming in that everybody wanted to see, of course, was Malcolm Brown. But they really like this young man. He's going to be probably become their short yardage back eventually. Gets another carry here. Stopped up just short of the first down is forward progress at about the 29 it'll be third down and one coming up Xavier Webb making the stop for Rice I, I think third down and one is such a great opportunity for an offensive coordinator to get creative I'd like to see something here they uh, again a little vanilla except for the Wildcat with Jackson Shipley getting DJ Monroe in but uh, I, you know you're sitting here up 10 3 you haven't really you let one go to Davis uh, Davis has got that speed he's down uh, here at the bottom of the screen, maybe you uncork another one. Eddie Johnson, their short yardage back in the backfield. He gets the carry, got stoned and kept those legs going to get the first down. Got a good block, and Justin Allen had him wrapped up and couldn't bring him down. Jamison, Barry Hill, the fullback, gets a really nice block at the point of attack, but it was a defensive lineman. That got inside. Good job by Johnson. Again, spinning off the exact same thing he did down on the goal line. Good quarterback in the ball game. David Ashin. He hands it off. That's DJ Monroe, one of the faster tailbacks. Well, I, I'm frankly a little surprised that David Ash is in the game. Kind of. Uh, running neck and neck with Case McCoy for that second uh, position but this young man a true freshman who uh, came in for spring ball they've liked they've liked him from day one he looks the part but uh, how much of a surprise oh, is I, that? I, it's a big surprise <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure it, it it didn't look to me like Gilbert got dinged and to do that you know you don't maybe you don't want to walk the freshman off the bench at the beginning of a series you want to bring him in the middle well, he completes his first pass here to DJ Monroe and a nice open field tackle that time after the gain of two yards. Callahan making the stop. And Gilbert coming back onto the field. Uh, how fragile do you think Garrett Gilbert's psyche still is? If you put in a freshman like that, do you risk losing him? it? Well, if you had it in the plan and you covered it with the guys before the game, uh, which is likely what they did, not at all. You, you just say, look, he's earned the right to play a little bit. Uh, a little surprised that they roll him in when they're trying to get their offense going. You know, I think sometimes you think, let's get a quarterback in, and you just don't need to. Let your offense kind of marinate a little bit. It's a brand new deal. Third and two. Gilbert. Talked about his mobility and showing off those wheels. Rolling on 22s all the way down for the first down. Well, that doesn't seem like a confidence shaken quarterback right there. And this is something that uh, Brian Harson worked very hard during camp uh, with Gilbert on because he, he is. He's a very good runner. I don't know that he's as good as Colt McCoy, obviously not as good as Vince Young, but decent change of direction. But what he is, he's got a really nice long stride. So he's not very quick. He's not going to make people miss. But when he decides to take off, which is what Harson has been telling him, just choose to go faster. That time, really nice job. Whitaker the lone back on first and ten. Whitaker on the toss. And he gets out to the 30. He got about six. It'll be second down and four. You know, Brian Harson, the offensive coordinator, brought up a good point. At Boise State, he had Zabransky, who had a 20 interception season one year. So he's used to dealing yeah. with a, a quarterback who has to be nurtured the right way. And, and it was interesting when he said about Jared Zabransky. Of course, Zabransky, the next year, Boise State goes undefeated and wins the Fiesta Bowl against Oklahoma. But what he talked to him about is accountability. You know, yeah, a lot of other people made mistakes, but let's look at what we can fix of you. And, uh, you know, yeah, other people made mistakes. We've got a lot to fix with you. Tucked it under, but then passed it complete. Right around the 20 yard line, that was Darius White, the 6 3 sophomore. And it's a 10 yard pickup, another first down. A very enterprising effort that time by Garrett Gilbert. Well, now they start to get a little bit of the move of the pocket. 
and such a better job. You saw him that time turn his shoulders. Remember we showed on the highlight last year he just when he was on the move his shoulders were all over the place. That looked really nice. Bergeron the deep back out of the offset eye. Gilbert steps up. Had a man open but it's incomplete intended for Mike Davis and you get the feeling Gilbert liked to have that one back. His second down and ten. Well. Paul Porras comes on a blitz and this is how you blitz watch uh, as he goes and <laughs> wow. uh, Joe Bergeron true freshman welcome to college football that's what they do when they blitz with the big boy leagues it's called pass protection yeah, right? yeah yeah those true freshmen they don't they didn't have to pass protect they were running for 3,000 yards in high school well better put your big boy pants on Joe play the drive on the fly sweep this is Shipley making like his brother and he stepped out of bounds back inside the 10 at about the eight yard line well they say that Jackson Shipley might even be a little bit further along than his brother Jordan was at the same stage now there's the freeze where they're saying he went out of bounds I think they're gonna call this a touchdown wow, Par pardon me pardon me pardon me when they when they call it out of bounds on the field you cannot review that because they blow the whistle now the officials are told if it's close let the play go and then let refute let the review review it but you cannot review this because once it's called out of bounds but as we saw boy it sure looked like there was some green between his out outside of his foot and the white first and goal And off and Bergeron stopped up immediately by Justin Allen transfer from Idaho a two yard loss on the play it'll be second and goal this is what you call a blown assignment well there you go you know what we were wrong from that angle it did look like Shipley and the linesman was right on it so staying corrected did look like his foot was out of bounds Terry Porter our replay official today Ozzy Whitaker the deep back well play the drive for the Longhorns. Second and goal. Gilbert squeezes it in, and I mean squeezes it in to Mike Davis. And third and goal coming up after the three-yard gain. You know, one play that they worked on, a route that they worked on really hard, Texas, the other day in practice, is what's called a fade back shoulder throw where the receiver acts like he's running a fade and then Gilbert actually throws a low hard pass to the backside outside shoulder of the receiver are you thinking four down here territory are you, are you going for it or are you looking thinking four? why wouldn't you why wouldn't you good call so maybe you could run a quarterback draw or something here. that's an excellent idea Whitaker in motion flag down Gilbert Almost intercepted. Looked like there were a lot of moving parts there for Texas offensively. The flag was thrown. It was tipped by Michael Smith up front. Brian Harson had some interesting comments in how he's implementing this thing stage by stage to us, isn't he? There's so much information that goes <laughs> into this offense. Illegal shift by the offense. Two players were moving. Sometimes it doesn't always go according to plan. Yeah, and now, you know, if you would have gotten, say, down to fourth and one or inside the one, maybe you go for it. But now, put the three on the board, go up ten. But in uh, comes uh, Justin Tucker. Made one earlier from 39 yards out. This one coming from 23 yards away. Tucker, the team's punter as well as the place kicker. Snap was a little bit off, and... Tucker tucks it inside that left upright and Texas takes a 10 point lead with six minutes to go here in the first half in their season opener. They've won 39 out of 40 against Rice. Back with more from Austin right after this. And welcome back everyone to Austin Texas Texas Memorial Stadium. Rice so far offensively. Taylor McGarg, the quarterback, 9 of 15 for just 46 yards. And uh, Garrett Gilbert 
who's been scrutinized for many months going back to last Thanksgiving 6 of 13 for 86 yards and, and he was pulled out of that drive and Samantha Steele was just reporting that it, it was part of the plan Ash was warming up but now a lot of people were wondering coming out of camp who was second string now you know he, you don't play David Ash a true freshman uh, even though if he doesn't play after the third game you could still petition for a red shirt but to me if he's if you were planning to play him in this game he's clearly your second string quarterback from the five it's Charles Ross With that great return out to midfield last time this time he's brought down shy of the 20 at the 18 yard line by Aaron Benson well, folks, the Mac Brown Radio Show on the Longhorn Network, Wednesday at 7 o'clock Central Time. Put your eyes on Texas, and I think that scowl might be turning around a little bit. That furrowed brow might be disappearing if things continue to trend this way. And Mac Brown telling us yesterday that he's having as much fun now, Ed, as he's ever had in his 14 years as head coach here at Texas. And a lot of it, the result of the six new coaches and the youthful energy that they've infused in the program. First down and ten. When you go out to practice, it's just it's impossible not to notice it. There is a big difference. And off. Peterson was in a quarterback. You know, I've Tyler been, Smith on the carry. Sorry, Mark. I've been around Mac Brown for many, many, many years, and uh, you know, a, a lot, a lot of people. When you, you look at that five and seven year, you forget the year before. The best player arguably in college football, Colt McCoy, gets hurt on the first series in the national championship game. So you don't even have everything you need to compete in that game. He said, it's so hard to get there. I didn't realize how much it had knocked out of me until I was able to step away from last season and see that it, and, and he admitted, it hurt my focus a little bit. Eddington, pardon me, Peterson gets the first down. You know, back to Mac Brown, you know, there was a personal variable to his tragedy as well. He lost his mother just 23 days after losing to Alabama in that national championship game. And uh, he admits that he didn't bounce back as well as he would have liked to or as well as he wanted to. But, of course, when you're faced with that kind of circumstance, nobody really knows. Peterson again. Peterson out to the 35-yard line. I thought it was interesting the way that Mac Brown talked about the input now that he takes from different sources and the, the leadership committee consisting of seniors and a couple juniors on the team and uh, some interesting suggestions that they made. We'll tell you about those after this play. Second and five. could really help themselves getting some points before the end of the half here. Peterson again almost broke that tackle brought down at the 37 yard line but back to that leadership committee. What do you make of the fact that they came to coach Brown and said coach we need more clocks. Well <laughs> there was a problem because like all good coaches five minutes as early as on time and uh, this is the player said you know coach that's all good but if you look around our building there are not enough clocks please put more <laughs> clocks up so. He acquiesced, and I think they have a clock in every room now. Should be on time for class, too. Third and two coming up for the Owls. Peterson again. And that's going to be real close. Depending on the spot, it looks like he may have gotten the first down out to the 40-yard line. Jackson Jeffcoat making the stop on the play. Awfully conservative play calling right now for Rice. I mean, they've got a guy in McHarg who in the first quarter showed he's got plenty of arm, but John Reagan in his first game playing calls feels like he's dialed it back a little too much right now. First and ten. Yet to see the Owls take a shot downfield. Texas bringing some heat. Boy, they got it off mm. in time. It should have been caught. A little bit high for Randy Kitchens. Yeah, you want that one back. Kitchens, a guy who's been up and down so many different times in his career with injuries and different things. But that ball, yeah, he should be. Coach, Coach Bailiff is upset. You got to make that catch. You got a senior. Ball was thrown on time, albeit a little hard. 
But uh, McCarg had knew he had pressure coming. He knew he couldn't pick up that blitz to the weak side. So he got it out in a hurry and Kitchens couldn't make the catch. Second and ten. Wow. The receiver screen. That was way high. Boy, that's the Intended second for time. McDonald. There's a flag coming down from deep in the backfield, but uh, the defensive backfield. But that's the second time on that throw the ball's completely gotten away from McCarg. Second time we've seen that call tonight. Actually. Well, because the ball, if the ball's thrown behind the line of scrimmage, if you're working back towards a defensive back, you cannot block below the waist. They've tweaked that rule a little bit this year. There used to be this really complicated rule about where the person was lined up, and now they've kind of gotten rid of that. If anybody seven yards or more away from the line of scrimmage goes and blocks someone back towards where the ball was set, it's an illegal block. Second and long, 25 to go. On the handoff, this is Smith. And a big hit coming up from the corner. And a flag down. Diggs making the stop. Forcing Smith out of bounds. A gain of six on the plane. Another flag. Personal foul. Having the face mask by number 91. Wow. Of the defense. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. And that is also another rule where a personal foul on the defense is not a yardage for first down. It's an automatic first down because that 15 yards would not have been enough for the first. A huge yeah. break for Rice and a big mistake by one of your inside guys, Keaston Randall, a senior. A 2.53 to go here in the first half and a big chunk of yardage on the penalty all the way out to the 46 near midfield. Rice, remember, burned those two timeouts almost back-to-back -back earlier this quarter. Carr got to the shotgun. And incomplete. Not sure who he wanted to hit on that. Kitchens was there. McDonald was kind of there. And it's second down and ten. Well, and right now, Manny Diaz is showing why a lot of coaches in the SEC, when Matt Brown called around and asked about him, said, hey, could you get him out of our league? <laughs> because right now, he's in McCarg's head. He's shown him about five different blitzes on this uh, uh, on this series alone, and McCarg looks shaken. And start. Second and ten. And it off right up the middle. And a great game by Smith. And Smith with a first down into Texas territory. With about 2.33 to go now in the half. Well, McCart barely gets this handoff. Really nice blocking that time up the middle. That was 52 Keyshawn Carrington. But uh, nice move at the end there on Blake Gideon. And a jailbreak screen complete to number 88 McDonald. This time catching it. Well, that's a load to bring down yeah. a receiver in 6'5", 260. And he brought a little anger to that run. He was voted Rice's top wide receiver a season ago. And now Rice, I think Rice should start going fast. Look how tired the front four is uh, for Texas. Don't go slow. Call the play, run. Call the play and run. Ah, don't do this. Don't give him time to breathe. And hand it off again. Down to the 31 yard line is Tyler Smith brought down by Acho. And if I'm Texas, I've got to start thinking about using one of those three timeouts. Your, your offense, you're, you're going to burn all of this, and your offense is not going to have a chance. Just to get a breather? Get, get a, absolutely. Get a breather. Save some, uh, some time for your offense. Um, but now they just seem like they're okay letting the clock run. Rice with one timeout remaining. Incomplete. And it's fourth down and seven coming up. Yeah, and I think you're right at the edge of, you know, you're... They, they like their kicker. They think Boswell can go as long as 55. Here would be my concern here, though, is... Big pressure moment. A lot of times on a long kick, a kicker will drive the ball. So if you get any push, if you're Texas, but 
This one's going to be about 49. Eddie. I think Rice missed an opportunity there. They had they had Texas tired and they didn't speed up. 49 yards out. Chris Boswell made one earlier from 42. And he may have hooked this one in, and he does with a little bit of room to spare. So Rice within a touchdown now of the Longhorns with just under a minute to go in the first half. How big is that field goal for Huge. You? Huge. You, their, their entire sideline erupted when he made that. Rice lost this game 34-17 a year ago to Texas, and they liked that one on the Owl sideline. Over 101,000 strong here in Austin. And right now, look at our LonghornNetwork.com poll question. Who will be the Longhorns leading Russia tonight? Log on to LonghornNetwork.com to cast your vote. Now Malcolm Brown, the highly touted running back from right here in the state of Texas, true freshman, has not played yet. We're talking to the coaches, they said, we still think he's got everything we expected, size, speed, ability to move. But like all freshmen, especially at that position, because of pass protection, you know, they're going to get a quarterback hurt if they go the wrong way. We saw what happened to Bergeron when Porus came on that blitz. So you're just always worried about that. And you have to bring those guys along fairly slowly sometimes. Got to get to that. The other category in there for DJ Ed Cunningham's right-in vote. DJ Monroe. He has pretty good wheels on that from first down the goal line. A line drive kick. Into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. You know, Ed, we were talking during the commercial break that there was so much anticipation about this year's version of the Longhorns team that this was a team shrouded in secrecy, not a tremendous amount of access to the general local media at large. You think the fans might be thinking right now, geez, I'm, I'm a little underwhelmed by what I'm seeing. I don't think there's any doubt. I, but I also think, Mark, they probably didn't know how good Rice was either. But but at the same time, I think you're absolutely right. I think these fans are thinking, wow, you know, this should be 27 to 3, not 13 to 6. But, I, I, you know, I went to Rice this week. I sat and watched them practice and, and got to be around their guys. I, you know, I know they're picked lower half of the West in the Conference USA. They're just a better team than me. On first and 10, Gilbert completes it. Whitaker on the move. Out of bounds with a first down with 49 seconds to go. They have three timeouts remaining, a pickup of 15. And to me, this is where you start to learn about a quarterback and how much they have grown is in this drill. Because of the ability in college football to stop the clock with first downs and out of bounds, there's actually, I think, some more thinking for a college quarterback sometimes to know, you know, I can't. If I make that throw, we're going to cross first down. We'll stop the clock. There's other ways to do it. So I think it's a really good measure of how far Garrett Gilbert has come from 2010. Gilbert, they tried to set up the receiver screen. There was nothing happening yeah. there. Just a bunch of linen down on the field at the 36-yard line. Jackson Shipley. That will be receiver. one. That will be one where Brian Harson in film says throw that one in the dirt. Don't, there's just no reason to throw that ball into that much traffic. Plus, you're throwing a ball into traffic where when he gets tackled, the clock's going to keep going. Now, we've got three timeouts, so we'd probably just burn one right there, but that'll be a good teaching moment when they get into the film study. An illegal shift by the offense. Two players were moving and did not reset. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. You know, Mark, second time that that's been called. And you've got to remember, this offense is so complex with so many moves, so many shifts. Not surprised that we've seen two illegal shifts here in the first half. There's a look at Lowell Galindo and Priest Holmes. Joe Harrington coming up at halftime. That pass complete. Forward progress going to be marked up around the 40-yard line. John Harris with his first reception of the night with 31 seconds to go. And a full complement of three timeouts remaining as they burn one right here. I'm not trying to beat facetious or disrespectful in any way but for Matt Brown how much of a it is a win that Garrett Gilbert hasn't thrown an interception here in the first half after throwing 17 last year well you know you go back to last year such a different offense and frankly they're not asking much of Garrett Gilbert right now in this game which I think is very smart I, I just don't think there's any reason uh, that first game out all new offense 
a guy whose confidence was jarred last year. I don't think they should ask much of him, but eventually I want to start seeing he's got a good arm. He can move around a little bit. Let's start seeing some more diverse offense. But, you know, I'm intrigued the fact they played David Ash so yeah. early. He's a young man that, from all reports, very confident, has control, has all of the ability, physical guy. So maybe they're starting to try to get that guy ready because they see something special in him. Second and five here. Gilbert on the move under heat and tackled from behind. Tremendous effort by number 35 on the play. A great bit of pursuit. And that is Scott Solomon, who is wearing Travis Bradshaw's number 35 in honor to a friend of his who had a broken neck in training camp and is unable to play for the rest of the season. And uh, Solomon deciding to wear 35 to get dedicate the season to his fellow senior Bradshaw. But that was nice effort lined up at the left defensive end spot. And Solomon we met with him yesterday. This is a well put together young man he lost about 15 pounds. He's playing some defensive tackle last year right before he got hurt. Got hurt the Wednesday, the last tough practice before the Texas game last year. It was going to be his senior year. Got into the weight room, and, and everyone on this team talks about how Scott Solomon set the tone from January, February, March right into camp. And that broken right foot, all good, as witnessed by that last play. Third and five for Gilbert. Completes it underneath, but short of the first mm. down. Cody Johnson made the catch. Yeah. Right, we'll now you've got to punt it away. I, that's a bad throw. That's a bad throw. Either pull it and run. Or you, you throw it underneath to a 250-pound fullback before the sticks who's covered. When you, you had a decent pocket, there wasn't a whole lot of pressure there. That's the end of the first half of play. The jury's still out on the Longhorns after the first 30 minutes here in game one and David Bailiff's team uh, if you told them that they would be only down seven at the break you'd probably think they would take it going into the locker room and Samantha standing by downstairs with coach Brown coach we can speculate but we don't hear the play call how do you assess your offense's performance well you'd rather have more than 13 points but we got a, a lead here we needed to score in the red zone down there we haven't had the ball a lot rice has done a good job of hitting the little run here and there and a short pass and they've kept the ball more than we have so when we get it we got to score with it can you talk to me about the plan with quarterback did you know david ash was going to go in or was that a last second thing no we knew that all right i'll let you get in there thanks coach thank you all right so quarterbacks Seemingly the center of discussion still for the Longhorns. Bevo digging it. His team up at the break. Thanksgiving and been a long wait for these fans here anxious times and they lead rice by seven 13 to six at the break Mark Jones chopping it up with Ed Cunningham Samantha Steele down in the field uh, uh, the jury seems to be out on the first <laughs> half uh, a lot of these fans expected to see you get the feeling a lot of fireworks and they're still waiting patiently I think we've got to remember that this is a first game for both teams you know we had the muff punt for rice which led to the only touchdown uh, for Texas so let, let's give these teams a little bit of a break with Texas with a tire new offense tire new defense but you know when we were meeting with Mac the other day he said I feel like we're underrated last year we were probably overrated this year I think we're underrated and he said I don't think Rice thinks we're as good as we are but I'm starting to think that maybe Texas didn't know how good Rice was uh, other than the Mike Davis throw the long throw how many Texas receivers have right. you seen open right. not many so I think Rice has come in with a good plan they've got a veteran team but I think they've got to get more aggressive offensively. You know, that one drive there, they looked a little confused. McHarg looked like he was in his head a little bit. They ran a lot of little inside traps. They've got to let it go here in the second half if they want to win. And for Texas, settle down. It's game one. Let's take a look at the first half statistics brought to you by Taco Cabana. 
total yards advantage in favor of the Longhorns almost 200 yards the time possession pretty much even in Texas with that one touchdown of the game so far the lone touchdown of the game so far coming off of a turnover and the Longhorns receiving the kick to begin the third quarter here DJ e. Monroe brought down shy the 20 at the 16 yard line where it'll be first down and 10 for Garrett Gilbert. Let's check in downstairs with Samantha. Mark, I got a chance to talk to David Bailiff, and he is incredibly confident in his defense right now. He said there's not a whole lot more he can ask of them. The only thing is stopping those big plays. On offense, he said we've just dropped too many balls. Special teams, he also wants some improvement. I asked him if he gave a big raw, raw speech. He said, Sam, they know who they're playing, and right now they're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, a lot of these players have gone against each other. Going back to their high school days, a lot of Texas players and content down on the field. First and ten, Whitaker. It's about four to be second down and six. Jared Williams making the stop for the out. And, you know, you have to give Bailiff, David Bailiff, so much credit for taking a program. Their first spring here, there was 55 guys on the team, and 10 of those were injured. So they had 45 players, and he made a decision. He's a guy from Texas. He's from New Brunsfels, which is just right down the street from Austin. And, and he said, we're going to recruit in Texas. We're going to make this our base. And he's done a wonderful job finally building some depth and a senior and junior team. Second and seven going up top. Gilbert incomplete intended for Mike Davis, who got twisted around. Ball seemed to come over the other shoulder that he wasn't expecting it over. Philip Gaines in on the coverage back deep for Rice. Well, and you know, you get into nitpick mode with young quarterbacks because this is the exact same play. They ran it the other way to Gilbert's right. Receiver can never catch an overthrown ball. So if you've got a guy with a step, if anything, underthrow the ball a little bit to get the contact for the 15 yards. But when you overthrow a ball, receiver can never make the catch. Third and long now for the Horns. Gilbert given plenty of time and finds his receiver wide open. That's Jackson Shipley with the first down. Shipley, the younger brother of Jordan Shipley. Now we're starting to see, I think now we're seeing a very quick halftime adjustment by Brian Harson and his staff. Of course, you make adjustments throughout the entire game. There were two deep routes over the top of Shipley. He came underneath of it. And uh, Malcolm Brown now into the ball game for the first time. A highly touted freshman. One of the top recruits in the entire country, a five star recruit a season ago. And he gets the touch, plowing forward, getting about four yards, sets up a second down and six. And you hear the <laughs> cheer of the fans. Boy, not sure what that cheer exactly is saying at Cunningham. I think it, well, you know, it's funny because. There is a, a large, uh, loud group of Texas fans who are huge fans of recruiting, as a lot of college fans are becoming. <laughs> and I think everybody was waiting for this guy, thinking he would be the salve for the wounds of their running game. So I think that's what that cheer was all about. You saw those uh, impressive numbers that he put up last year in high school. And a play fake. Robert under some heat. And sacked. Back at the 38 yard line good pressure up front by the Owls defensive crew They line up out of that 4 2 5 alignment. We haven't talked much about it. What kind of advantage does it have for them if at all it, the one a lot of teams are going to a five or six defensive back defense is their set defense nickel or dime and a lot of it is because of uh, the spread offenses and uh, as they go to get the play action. That's just a late block by the fullback who gets out there late in good pursuit. But what it does, puts more speed on the field. Loss of two, third and long. And more heat on Gilbert. Got out of trouble once, threw it up. A poor decision and Boy. fortunate that Fozzie Whitaker was back there to scoop the ball up. I'm not sure that was in the game plan. And now a smattering of boos raining down on Garrett Gilbert. Yeah, that was a, that was a bad mistake. A, a really great uh, blitz call by Chuck Driesbach, the defensive coordinator. He's got two coming on the outside, and Whitaker has to pick up one. 
So you've got a free guy. Whitaker makes the mistake of taking the outside player. You always take the inside guy because he has the straightest line. Either that or it was a blown blocking assignment by the offensive line. Justin Tucker rolls out to his right and punts it. And the Owls are going to get good starting field position here on their first drive of the second half of play. Xavier Webb on the punt return. Got about six, and it'll be first and ten for Taylor McGarg for Rice. And I'll tell you right now, Texas is giving Rice a lot of confidence. You know, their defense, David Bailiff, he's right. He should have confidence in, in how this defense is playing. Now, again, I think this offense for Rice needs to match what the defense is doing. Let's get a little more aggressive. Have they thrown a ball downfield yet? I'm not sure we've seen a long throw. Maybe a good time to take a shot here. First and ten. Tyler Smith, the lone back behind Taylor McGarr. McGarr on the toss to Smith. Almost looked like they had numbers for a minute on the edge, and it's going to be a gain of three. Sets up about a second down and seven on the play. Uh, Tyler Smith, a Central Texas kid. You know, we talked about the success that they've had recruiting now and getting a little bit of depth. A big part of that is the fact that they do camps. San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, in Houston. And they've got a little bit of numbers now at Rice. Really smart deal where they go out and actually do high school camps around the state to attract kids. And they know if they're coming to a Rice camp, they're interested in playing for us. The guard tiptoes and close to the first down took a hit on the sidelines no flag and now a late flag coming in and Gideon the defensive back there saying hey he was still in the field of play or at least trying to plead his case yeah but this is a point of emphasis safety rule and the other thing too is Blake Gideon left his feet and was targeting at the shoulders or above so this, launching yeah this is this is the right call McCarg was, I think, technically in the field of play, but watch Gideon launch and lead with his head. Again, in college football, it's not about whether you lead with the head or not. It's whether you launch and go at the shoulders or the head area, and that's clearly what Blake Gideon did right there. So I, th good. I think that's a good call. After the play, personal foul, out of bounds, Well. And you know, looking at the replay, McCart was out of bounds. So I think you could have gotten a targeting call there or a late hit out of bounds. But uh, either way, I think they should have gotten, Rice should have gotten the 15 yards that they did. They move it all the way down to the Texas 28 yard line. This is the opening drive of the second half for Rice. Tyler Smith in the backfield. And now nervous cheers from the sellout crowd here of over 100,000 in Texas. Nice run. Smith stays on his feet. First down and more. First and goal coming up for Rice. A missed tackle on the play as well by Keenan Robinson and Jordan Hicks. Well, this offensive line for Rice does a really good job. Watch the push at the point of attack on Keiston Randall right by the play. Texas looks tired up front, and Rice is starting to get a ton of confidence. First down and goal. If again this time brought down behind the line of scrimmage and Samantha has more we're going to keep it right here uh, Samantha let's go downstairs guys this rice sideline is exactly what you just described incredibly confident there is not a single player sitting on the bench right now now that's not to say that Texas came out of the half without confidence but I can tell you this fatigue is becoming an issue on that Texas sideline Second and goal here. Play clock winding down to four. Boy, McGarg seemed a little unsettled yeah. there. You tell me. You know, and, and, and you go back, they ran the exact same play two plays in a row. Smith gets the long run, then they run the exact same play. And I just, you know, John Reagan again, first game calling plays. Uh, I, I just think they need to be a little more diverse. They have the offense a little more aggressive. And here, I think you got to get McCarg out of the pocket and, and throwing to this trip side. He looks the other way on the fade. Contact in the end zone. No flag incomplete. Intended for Kitchens, but it was broken up by Bindham. So it's fourth and goal. 
Bring in the field goal unit here. I think you got to put the points on the board here. But uh, again, I go back. I, you don't throw a fade. It's it's a one shot deal. You've got the three receivers. You got an athletic quarterback. And I know you've got a size mismatch with Kitchens at 6'3", 225, but just want to see a little, a little more flavor in the play calling for Rice. Boswell into attempt this field goal. His third of the night. He's already connected from 42 and 49. This one coming from 26 yards out. High snap. But he knocks it through. And the Owls to within four points. And to say that there's a little trepidation here <laughs> would be a little bit of an understatement. They expected fireworks. They still haven't come yet, but waiting for now. Texas football on the Longhorn Network is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And welcome everyone back to Austin, Texas. A glow at night. Capital is great state of Texas right now. The Longhorns leading by four points. 9.07 to go in the third quarter. Mark Jones chopping it up with Ed Cunningham and Samantha Steele down on the field. Rice on a 6 nothing run. A squib kick coming all the way down to the 10 yard line. This is DJ Monroe, one of the Fastest players on the field. He's brought down at about the 27 yard line. Garrett Gilbert has gone the distance at quarterback. He's well documented 17 interceptions a season ago. What do you make of his performance tonight? Well, he hasn't got a ton of help with some protection. That time, Cody Johnson with a bad block. This time, two come off that edge where there's only one blocker and then just a horrible mistake. And, you know, we were talking a little bit about off air. What's, what's his leash like? Yeah. You know, and for me, I think if you think your future was is with Garrett Gilbert you've got to let him make these mistakes first game new offense all of that if not then maybe you start thinking Case McCoy or David Ash who we've already seen in this ballgame that's been row on the reverse turbo kicked in for a minute but then thrown out of bounds nicely by Webb Xavier Webb limiting that gain to seven yards maybe second down in three. I'm going to win that poll. <laughs> yeah, uh, my write-in vote is going to be, <laughs> is going to win that. See, let's see some more vertical routes for Texas. You know, they had the, they had, they've had the nice, the one long throw to Davis. They just missed it again. Then they ran two verticals and had Shipley underneath. Start seeing them use some of these long, tall, fast receivers. Gilbert gets rid of it and a good decision to a wide open White. Darius White's forward progress going to be marked up around the 45 and that time Garrett Gilbert Ed made a good decision in wake of some big pressure by Porus. Again Porus coming off the edge unblocked and right now it looks like Chuck Driesbach the defensive coordinator has got a little something working. It seems like he knows what's going on and here comes David Ash which was about the same way they used him in the uh, first half. Matt Brown telling Samantha it was by design in the first half. Probably think the same way here. This is Monroe into the boundary and run out of bounds at about the 47 yard line. Wasu making the stop on the play. Well, folks, don't miss the Mac Brown press conference Monday on the Longhorn Network with Coach providing insight and analysis from week one against Rice. Also get a preview of Texas preparations for the week two opponent, BYU. Mac Brown press conference on the Longhorn Network Monday at 11 a.m. Central Time. Put your eyes on Texas and put your eyes on Garrett Gilbert, who's back in the ballgame. Second down and five. Hand off to Brown, Malcolm Brown. Close to that first down, got about three yards, sitting up third and short. <laughs> the biggest cheers <laughs> so far going. tonight have been when Malcolm Brown, the highly touted freshman, comes into the ball game. Uh, Fans here all uh, read ESPN.com and our, uh, <laughs> our football rankings, huh? Gilbert incomplete. Boy, Blaine Irby was mm. wide open. And for a guy that has missed so much time because of injuries, a guy who was ready to have a breakout season, 
That's a really uh, incomprehensible error there by him. And, and Texas going for it here on fourth and short. Do you like it? I love it. I, there's got to be a time where Mac Brown is that because this is the head coach's call. There's got to be a time where the head coach says, let's go for it. Now, just pound straight ahead. You, you, your offensive line has to win this battle for you. They got their hammer guy in there, Cody Johnson. He gets the call. And he gets the first down just across the 42-yard line. Yeah, I mean, you, you just have to at some point. And, and Mac really lets his coaches coach. He, he lets his defensive coordinator coach. He lets his offensive coordinator coach. But that's the place where he can put his hands on this team. Say fourth and one. We're just over midfield. 13 to nine in our first ball game. Go for it. Uh, good aggressive call. Malcolm Brown, the deep back out of the eye. Cody Johnson, the up back. First and ten. Malcolm Brown. A nice gain. And boy, you can really sense the fans here holding their breath when he touches the ball. Look at those impressive numbers coming out of high school. Class 5A Offensive Player of the Year. And in the state of Texas, when you look at the numbers of kids that play high school football, that's a big-time award. Well, and the reason that they were so confident when, when they, he played 5A level, you know, they, they, they got Bergeron out of that 1A, 2A level, much smaller school. So it was hard to say because he was playing against smaller opponents and everything. Hard to say whether he would translate. He has, but they figured Malcolm Brown would. There's a reverse, a little trickery, and a throw. Shipley. Touchdown. But there's a flag on the play. Horus was back there defending Shipley. John Harris let it go on the reverse and delivered it to Shipley. And this is what they came to see tonight. What a fantastic job by Shipley. He gets pushed out of bounds by Porus, fights back in. You have to get your feet back in. You saw the hat go by the official, but that was an excellent job by a true freshman. Got back in, main established him. Now, the only thing they're going to review is whether he actually made the catch because Shipley did a wonderful job, got himself back into the field of play before he was the first to touch the ball. Terry Porter, our replay official. Well, that's a nice throw for a receiver, John Harris, right there. Yeah, it looked like he had his arms like underneath he, uh, the that, ball. That ball did not look to me like it touched the ground as he went down. Now, it's it's the whole process. You have to make the catch all the way through landing on the ground. But again, there Shipley gets reestablished in the field of play, so it's not a penalty. And the angle before looked to me like he got his arm underneath. This is. This is a very savvy young man. Remember Jordan Shipley, his older brother, an NFL receiver, had 100 catches, an All-American here as a senior. Yeah, that's a catch. You look at the throw by Harris. You know, he was a high school quarterback. It was close. It looked like the tip of that ball was going down, but there's another look. Mm -hmm. This should be a little more definitive, and I would have to say that yeah. he caught that boy. Ball. That's that's really good. That's, that's a true freshman. This is a guy who's been around a lot of football his whole life and has great body control, very good hands. After further review, moving on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. And Jackson Shipley with his first collegiate touchdown. <laughs> and you have a feeling there's going to be a lot more where those came from. He's one of the fastest guys on the team, watching him in practice. All the coaches talk, Brian Harson was talking about how he just understands space. He adds wrinkles to routes that we didn't even really talk about, just has a great grasp and great ability. The extra point good. It's a little bit of irony in the fact that the touchdown pass wasn't thrown by the quarterback, <laughs> Garrett Gilbert. But they'll take it, I'm yes, pretty sure, will. Mark. Jackson Shipley, somewhere, his older brother Jordan watching, saying, you know where he learned that from. Harris liked it, too. 
Texas football on the Longhorn Network is brought to you by Taco Cabana, the flavors of Mexico made fresh by hand, and by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And welcome back, everyone, to Austin, Texas. The Longhorns leading now, increasing their lead to 20 to 9, courtesy of that eight play, 72 yard drive, eclipsing about three and a half minutes on the clock. Well, after the game, stick around on the Longhorn Network for the Texas Game Day Final. To get all the post game analysis highlights and a look ahead at next week's game against BYU. Texas Game Day Final on the Longhorn Network tonight at 10 o'clock Central Time. Mark Jones along with Ed Cunningham and Samantha Steele. There's those Oregon duck shoes. Funky. Yeah, Ooh. I noticed that yesterday. Mac, I asked Coach Brown. How did he about get that it. by Coach? I, well, I asked him and he didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to bring it up. Very Oregonish, huh? I don't know. Kicker's got the wrong beat. Ross at the goal line. Headed on Cruz and made it out near the 25 yard line. But when you look at some of the guys who have been catalysts at Cunningham for tonight, it's, it's been some of the youth. Yeah, the biggest cheers have come when Malcolm Brown, the true freshman, we showed his stats earlier. We had a monster high school career. Running pretty good. I, I like how I like how he keeps it going straight ahead, and then they do a reverse, a little Boise State trick. John Harris, a freshman, to Shipley, a freshman. So Recruiting doing okay for the Longhorns in this game. Charles Ross in the backfield. First and ten. Let's see how Rice responds. Ross with a nice run, broke a couple of tackles, sets up a second down in about one. Blake Gideon making the stop. You got the feeling that they lost an opportunity in the last drive. Psychologically, any effect you think? I the only reason I'd say no is it's a pretty veteran squad for Rice. These guys have been through a lot, a lot of injuries, guys have had to sit up. That's the only reason. But if they can't produce here and Texas goes down and score, scores on their next drive, then I think we can start talking about some of that confidence starting to wear off. And Ross gets the first down. Interesting that Charles Ross has been the guy tonight as opposed to Sam McGuffey who led the team not only in rushing a season ago, but passing and receiving. You know, Ross is a guy that they've kind of been waiting for a little bit. He's fought some injuries. Big guy, 230 pounds, but one of the fastest on the team. But yeah, we've not seen McGuffey. I believe he only has one touch yeah. so far in the ball game. Four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Again, gets the carry, gets about two. Oh, and Sam McGuffey, who was the leading rusher and receiver last year, transfer from Michigan. Round 10 6, 10 7, 100 meter. So 20, very fast. 25 foot long jumper, too. Yeah, people, Great athlete. People coming in to check in with him. I, you know, I wonder if feels a little bit like it might be a punishment thing like maybe something ha I just this doesn't feel right to me yeah. that McGuffey is not playing much if at all quick three-step drop and a nice dart complete to kitchens Randy kitchens makes the catch working against Josh Turner on the coverage that's gonna be a first and ten now for rice and I, I tell you, you know, watching Taylor McCarr, he, he spent part of his summer at the Manning camp. And uh, he just, he looks confident when he throws it. He had, that, he had that one series and a half where the ball got away from him a couple times and Manny Diaz was in his head a little bit. But when he settles in, he can fire. From the 46-yard line, first down and 10. Whistle down, flags down. It was McGarg that said uh, coming into the game. Ball Hold on. Start by number 64 of the offense. Five yard penalty, and it's still first down. Tyler Parrish. McGarg said, that, you know, most Texas fans probably want to show up a little bit late, a couple minutes into the first quarter, and leave by halftime, but we have other scripts and other plans for this game. And more yeah. premature movement. Boy, they're just imploding here. This one's against Rice again. 
Ball starts. Number 71 to the offense. Five yard pin lead. All right, so now first and uh, 20. You got to think, what do you have? Because you know Texas is going to play back. I, I just doubt that they're going to play really aggressive. They got two safeties deep. Some type of wide receiver screen, something like that to cut this seven, eight, nine yards for, you know, second and long, then a third and medium this would be your goal. And trips formation to the bottom of your screen. The guard. The tuck it under, runs out of bounds at about the 38 yard line. Well, that was a. Uh, Wonderful move by Alex Okafor going against uh, the right tackle Tyler Parrish just whipped him to the inside and Okafor a guy that had to move inside the defensive tackle last year he's an undersized he's not a defensive tackle but uh, when Manny Diaz got here and saw him moving around he said that's a big man who moved we've got to get him back out the defensive end second and 19 guard with time and incomplete. There was a couple of receivers in the same area. Wilson couldn't squeeze onto it. The Canadian import. He's got that Canadian sticker on the back of his helmet there. Wow. He signed a uh, contract with the Toronto Blue Jays after yeah. one batting session. He played on the Canadian Junior National Baseball team. And they liked his left handed cut. They signed him. Third and long, 19 to go. Guard open, but short of the first down. Randy Kitchens, about five yards short of the first on Texas' side of midfield. Is this uh, you're down to 11? Do you think about going for it here? I, 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 I don't. I think you punt this ball away. I, I just I, I would worry. You know, you've been talking about the confidence of Rice. Right. If you don't get this, Texas gets good field position. They go down and score. I think you burn your team. So I think you kick this one away. Kyle that was Martins the, comes in. That was the longest throw, 14 yards on the day. At some point, they need to uncork one. They just have to. Martin's an all-conference USA selection a year ago, a rare guide nominee. Diggs back deep. Let it bounce. And Rice with a chance to down this. Wow, do they ever at the one-yard line. A 48-yard punt and down by Dan Porras. So the... Longhorns 99 yards away with 139 to go in the third quarter. Longhorns leading by 11 points with 139 to go in the third quarter. Mark Jones along with Ed Cunningham and Samantha Steele down to the field. And earlier we asked you in our LonghornNetwork.com poll question, who will be the Longhorns leading rusher tonight? And there's a look at our results with... 93% of the precincts reporting so far in. Here's who I'm Malcolm going. Brown. I'm going with DJ Miller. That's my pick. <laughs> you won't give that up, huh? <laughs> no. 99 yards away, first down and 10. Cody Johnson in the backfield and a flag down on the play. Michael Smith, defensive lineman, may have jumped a little early for Rice. Yeah, Rice is just really harming themselves. You know, the muffed punt. That's just the technique and mental error. Uh, remember the penalty yeah. on the, uh, with uh, with the offensive line hitting late. They've just done enough. If, if you take those away, what does this game look yeah. like? You know, I mean, seven points for Texas yeah. came directly off of that muff and just really harming themselves. It's up a first down and five now after that penalty. Robert with a play fake, looking up top. Has a man and hits him in stride. Davis with another long one got in behind Philip Gaines. Mike Davis did a wonderful job on this route and a really nice throw by Garrett Gilbert. And did you notice how Davis had to slow down slightly to make that catch? Great adjustment. Gaines, they go with the play fake. Let's watch the feet. Boy, that is so much different. See how he ends up on his left leg? Remember yeah. watching film from last year? He would stick that foot out, and it was almost like he would fall backwards. That was such better technique by Gilbert. Picture perfect. This is Malcolm Brown. 
Take one more look at that strike delivered by Garrett Gilbert. And earlier we saw a throw that went over his head. This one, watch Davis. He actually has to go into glide. Now, of course, the defensive back catches up, but you're just not going to hit that throw perfect in stride every time. So if you're going to throw it, under throw it slightly, let your receiver adjust to it. If the defensive back gets there too soon, at least you get a defensive pass interference out of the deal. Most of us were introduced to that young man right there on your screen in the national championship game a couple of years ago. Coming in for Colt McCoy was hurt early in that game. Second and five on the reverse. This is Shipley. Tries to get to the edge and lunges for that first down. Coming up just a little bit short of that line. Seen a lot of formations, and Chuck drives back the defensive coordinator for Rice said, We feel like we're going to be playing against Boise tonight. Right now, it's burnt orange on the menu. They trail by 11 with three quarters in the books. Brown talked about putting his team back together brick by brick. Right now they lead by 11 points. There's a look at the numbers and talked about the mortar being the chemistry and the ambition to keep the team bonded and together. He enjoyed doing that shoot so much that he decided to keep the props, the bricks, and put it inside the locker room and afterwards use it to write the potential scores of the games, hopefully winning scores. Third down and one now. Gilbert keeps it himself. But it's going to be close. They didn't seem to get much of a surge. As we unveil the fourth quarter here on the season opener for Texas. They won 39 of the last 40 against Rice. And they're going to say it's a first down. Gil Mack Brown talked about the fact that there was a lot of turnover and uh, he's really enjoyed he seems like he's delegated a lot more this year enjoying it and paying less attention to how much scrutiny he's undergoing in the media he just seems you know what he said something interesting the other day the whole brick by brick he said you know I'm not even focused on wins and losses and probably for the first time in my career just on how we can get better every day here's Whitaker and Whitaker gets about three it'll be second down and seven to go Texas in tough this year in the Big 12 Conference. When you look at Oklahoma State, Texas A&M. Wait, A&M and is Oklahoma. Oh yeah, A&M is still in the Big 12. Okay, well, hasn't changed. Haven't checked Sports Center in a while. Recently, the Aggies submitting a letter that they'd be leaving the conference. Second down and eight coming up. Malcolm Brown in the ball game and tailback on the fly sweep. This is Brown. This is Monroe actually DJ Monroe spinning like a DJ on those turntables the ones and twos he got a first down well I think if you are uh, an upcoming opponent and here goes Texas fast I like this hustling up to the line of scrimmage trying to take advantage of that play nice call by Harson to get this going 17 yard gain going quick and they hand it off Bergeron in the ball game gets that one over the right side gets about three it'll be second down and seven Second and seven is just a very tough down, and out comes. They're going to go with the. Uh, actually, David Ash is coming in. Well, if I'm Rice, I, this. I just. I'm not sure why a true freshman would come in at quarterback when you're moving the ball on this seven yard line, but you've just got to assume. Well, they're going to go. They're going to go to a wildcat. That's what they're doing. Little deception here. Whitaker taking a direct snap here, fakes the handoff and keeps it himself. Fozzy Whitaker. Touchdown, Texas! Boy, he's excited, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's happy. He just hasn't told his face yet. Yeah. He's an intense guy, and what, what a great decoy where they bring the freshman out. So now on the defense, you're thinking, wait a minute, they're changing quarterbacks. But Ash actually went out and got a decent block for Whitaker so that he got the corner. A fantastic way to start the fourth quarter of play for the Longhorns. Increasing their lead to 27 to 9. And the diversified playbook of Brian Harson 
having great effect here. Watch the speed. He saw it and he goes and well. I gave a little bit of credit to David Ash for block. He actually just ran a fake round <laughs> to the inside and this guy followed him. But again, I go back when David Ash ran in, you heard my reaction. Right. Well, that's the exact reaction that Chuck Driesbach and the staff from Rice is saying, well, wait a minute, they're making a change and make a change, and all of a sudden they go to the Wildcat, they get the edge and score. And that's really the brilliance of what Brian Harson does. That's an outside sweep play. That, there's nothing fancy to that, but it's a whole different personnel group. And you bring in a quarterback that no one expects to be in inside the seven. So uh, I'll shut my mouth next time a freshman <laughs> quarterback comes in at the seven yard line. Well, it's a brand new look, a new era here for Mac Brown, the 14 year head coach of the Texas Longhorns. You know, when you talk to defensive coaches, uh, you know what they went what you have to go through to get ready to play a team that has this many personnel groupings this many formations it's a nightmare Brian Harson's old team Boise State leading right now 28 13 at the Georgia Dome against the Bulldogs as Charles Ross takes a knee let's peruse the schedule that Texas has coming up when you add it all up what do you see here? An eight and four, a seven and five, a nine and three? I, I think it all depends on the next three weeks. They're, they're going to have to improve. BYU comes in here, good team, returns nine starters on offense, seven on defense at UCLA. You just don't know what you're going to get, and Texas doesn't play them well. And then they get a bye before they get into league play. If they can get out of Iowa State healthy and on a roll, Oklahoma, yeah. Oklahoma State, you know, Oklahoma defensively has lost a lot of guys. I know they're AP number one. I'm not sure they're that good. A burst up the middle by Peterson into the secondary and a first down out near the 36 yard line. But you give this staff a little bit of time to start to get things settled in. Manny Diaz to get things going defensively. You get healthy, you get a bye week right before the league starts. It's, it falls pretty well for Texas. A handoff to Peterson again. This time, not quite as much room stopped up by Acho. And uh, let's go downstairs, uh, talk about a little brotherly love right now, Samantha. A lot of brotherly love on this sideline tonight. Jordan Shipley, of course, here to watch your younger bro. Tonight, he's putting on a show for you right in front of you. First collegiate touchdown. How'd that feel? Uh, that was awesome. Uh, he's he's uh, he's a lot of fun to watch. And, uh, just a you know a huge blessing to get to you know come out and watch him play. I thought he had another touchdown earlier, but he's, he just barely stepped out of bounds. I think everyone's been talking about how mature he is. Now I know he came down to Austin to work out with you during the lockout. What were you guys doing, and did he really improve over that time? Yeah, he's um, he worked out. We worked out together a lot, and uh, you know he's always just tried to pick up things, and he's a really quick learner. Um, and so you know anything I tell him, he he picks it up immediately, and uh, and obviously just you know. I'm amazed every time I come back and, and, uh, and work out with him at, and how much he's grown and, and progressed all the time. And there's been so much speculation from Texas fans wondering if he's going to build, be able to fill those shoes. He's wearing the same number. Do you think he has the ability to actually be better than you? Uh, I, I know he has the ability. I mean, he's 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 miles ahead of where I was. Um, and then obviously I missed two years with injuries and, and all that stuff. So if he can stay healthy, um, you know, the sky's the limit for him, really. I think he, uh, he's he got a lot of pressure on him. I know people are, you know, you know, hitting him with all kinds of comparisons and stuff like that. And that's tough as a, you know, somebody that hasn't even, you know, it's his first college game. But um, I think he'll be able to, to live up to it. Well, that is a very good sign for Texas fans. Jordan, thanks for your time. Go enjoy the rest of this one. All right, thank you. Mark? All right, Samantha. Momentum squarely in favor of the burnt orange right now. Guard hands it off. Peterson again. Up to about the 42-yard line. Well, you heard uh, Jordan Shipley talking about his younger brother Jackson, Ed, and it kind of underscores the fact that regardless of a five and seven season, to me, Texas still gets great players. They do. They do. I mean, they're very young at the receiver spot, but Jackson Shipley, I think, can start to be a little bit of a leader in there because of all of the things he's taking from his brother and what to do on routes and make adjustments. I, boy, they found themselves a nice one. Now two in a row from the Shipley family. Third down and three coming up. Agarg, a little bit of contact there. 
Intended for Kitchens, one of those tall wide receivers at 6-3, but unable to come up with it. And it sets up a fourth down and three for Rice. And Shipley starting as a freshman. You know, Jordan uh, Shipley uh, actually would have started as a freshman, but he was injured, ended up uh, getting the extra year. Well, and, and Matt Brown, as uh, Jackson goes out to receive the punt, Ta Jordan was talking about the comparisons and the pressure. He said, you know, his brother caught 100 balls and was an All-American as a senior. I think we should wait a little while before we make the comparisons. Fourth and three. Martin's with the punt. Shipley slips and falls back at the six-yard line. That uh, knee got tied up underneath him a little bit. A nice 52-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Shipley comes up limping just a touch. Back with more right after this. You know, sometimes, folks, owls do give a hoot. The Frost Bank Tower in Austin was the first high-rise building constructed in the United States after 9-11. Now, if you look closely, those two circles kind of look like an eye, a set of eyes. And the middle, an owl, it was designed by a rice owl. owl. <laughs> I, you know you what? I see a lot of things at night. We were talking about a production meeting the other day, and because I love that building, I think it's one of the coolest buildings architecturally in the country, quite frankly. But uh, when, when you look at it from that angle, it does look like an owl. Actually, rumor has it it was designed by someone from Rice, Malcolm Brown on the carry. Approaching 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, and this is the 93rd chapter of Rice against Texas. Texas has won 39 of the last 40. Look at the difference no, in productivity. Yeah, they're moving now. Yeah, and they got some of the trick plays in there. You know, when we were talking to uh, Brian Harson about the trick plays, he said one of the biggest reasons we do it is the guys like to practice it. It's fun. That It brings some energy to the practice. So because we practice it, because it's fun, we get good at it, we call them. All makes perfect sense. This is Malcolm Brown. Third and two. And... Uh, yeah, a lot of diversity in this offense. Yep, so you get a handoff, reverse pass, where Shipley does a wonderful job coming back in. Then you get Bozzy Whitaker. You had the freshman quarterback run off the bench and make all of us wonder what the heck is going on. Well, he's just going to line up and play a decoy. So Whitaker goes to the Wildcat formation and uses that speed. You know, Whitaker, a guy who, God, he was so banged up last year with hamstring and a knee and healthy all off season and he just looks chiseled and fit well, doing a great job in the classroom as well as the whistle blows down on the field Rice calls, uh, Rice calls a timeout Fozzie Whitaker has already graduated with his degree and working on his masters right now and right now uh, masters of their own destiny apparently as Mac Brown's team with the lead 27 9 when we come back Texas football on the Longhorn Network is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And HEB, for all your game day needs, no store does more than HEB. Well, this was the scene at halftime at Cunningham. It went from SEC to a dollar sign EC. Obviously making a statement. That's the mob, the Rice Band, making a statement about Texas A&M announcing this week that they will be leaving the Big 12, and everyone assumes it's to the SEC. The funny thing is, Rice is a bunch of smart people. They'll actually make less money, Texas A&M, next year in the SEC than they would if they stayed in the Big 12. If it's the SEC, yeah. Malcolm Brown with a nice sprint around the left side. And now Texas getting a little bit of momentum after that 17-yard gain again. And you know, Mark, with Texas A&M deciding to leave and then Oklahoma say, and they're listening to other people, uh, you know, Texas, the lost odds, the athletic director has said they'd like to keep the Big 12 together, and, and I think they should. Uh, the idea of super conferences, to me, quite frankly, turns my stomach. And I think that uh, regional conferences are better for the student athlete, I think and I think ultimately they're better for the bottom line. There's Brown. Got about one yard on the play. Yeah, a lot of speculation about... Uh, what kind of domino effect happens mm -hmm. after Texas A&M leaves and what becomes of the Big 12 and will it survive and 
Yeah, Big, and I, and Big Ten undergoing changes too. It's yeah, and I, and I think the, the conference, the Big 12 conference, should do everything they can to survive. I think they need to get aggressive, start looking at teams like BYU, some out of the box thinking. You probably can't get a team like Iowa, but why not make them aggressive? Yeah. An aggressive offer. Iowa State's already in the conference. TCU starts to make sense. Pull them back from the Big East. Come, I'm feeling that man. A little op-ed from Ed Cunningham. That pass complete to the tight end. Dominique Jones with another Longhorn first down. And you can almost feel Garrett Gilbert's confidence mm -hmm. burgeoning at this point. A pickup of 14 yards. First and 10. Well, you, you, it's certainly starting to feel in the second half like the guys are starting to get into the flow more of, of this Brian Harson uh, offense. First and 10. Starting to feel a little more confident. Ozzie Whitaker in the ball game. The deep back in the offset eye. Play fake. Gilbert going up top. Has his man again. Davis. And that time overshot him. That had six written all over it. He got in behind Chris Jammer. They've used that three different yeah. times tonight. Ed. Well, Davis, a guy who last year, the Texas coaches thought he'd explode. He hurt his knee, missed the Oklahoma game, battled that the whole year. But he can run by some folks. But again, they're going to go into the film room. And it's, it's good to learn for a young quarterback. You've got a world-class athlete. Don't overthrow yeah. him. Second you know, ten. just get a, And that ball was thrown a little flat, too. You want to get a little more air on that to let the guy make an adjustment underneath of it. Second down and 10. A little bubble screen. This is Jackson Shipley getting to the edge. Stayed in bounds and got the first down. Nimble move. And a great burst by Jackson Shipley. Well, you know, another hire on this staff was Daryl Wyatt, the new wide receiver coach. Been a long time at Oklahoma. And they've been working their tails off, blocking on the outside. Here's Deshaun Hales. Watch this cut block. Wonderful job. Got his guy to the ground. And he did a really, really smart thing. When you go for a cut block out in the middle of the field, if you don't get it, roll. Because at least you make the defender have to fight you off. That was great technique by Hales. Got a whistle down in the field, and uh, maybe they're going to send this to Terry Porter and our replay official booth and find out exactly where it was that Shipley stepped out of bounds. They're going to try and check the spot out. And, you know, just a moment while we have a little break here going back to Texas A&M leaving SEC. Obviously, Bill Byrne, the athletic director from A&M, publicly stating that a big reason they're leaving is because of the Longhorn Network. He thinks that it's an unfair advantage, both prestige and money-wise, with recruiting and everything like that. But, you know, it's kind of one of, the way I look at it, it's kind of be careful what you wish for. Right. You go from the Big 12, where, yeah, you may be upset about what Texas is doing, but all Texas is doing is growing their business and growing their brand. Makes a lot of sense. And when you look at Forbes magazine, and you say, which this is a rating based off of four or five different things, not just money. It's money back into the institution, Notre Dame, Texas. And then start looking at the SEC schools on here. Georgia, Florida, LSU, Tennessee, Auburn, Alabama. Texas A&M is 18th on this list. And, and, you know, you start to think, well, if you stayed in the Big 12 and you started to grow your brand, you're going to likely lose the Thanksgiving game with Texas. You may never play Texas again while you're in the SEC. It'd be a shame if that rivalry ceased to, ceased to exist. And take he, one more look at where Shipley stepped out of bounds. He did look like he was maybe half a yard short of the first down there. But I look at Texas A&M, and, and I understand they're upset about the Longhorn Network, and they think it's an unfair advantage. But now they're going into a conference, and one of the reasons they're going is because the institutions can't do their own networks. Okay. Well, who says that's not going to change? Right. And, and you've got the Forbes list with all of those schools above you. You're going from a league where, if things go right, they can win the conference championship this year. I think they're good enough to do that. I don't think they're good enough to do that in the SEC yeah. with this team this year. So. I think it was a re reactionary move. They went from a skirmish to a full-out war, and I'm just not sure it's going to be better for them. Things certainly escalating, especially on the uh, financial side, and you certainly couldn't blame Texas for wanting to grow their business, as you put it. You looked at where they rank. They are the number two brand in college football, right behind Notre Dame. 
and guess who the other school is who has a now it's a little different this network is obviously dedicated to the university of texas and notre dame and nbc's deal is a little different but there's the other school who has their own television deal with nbc yeah the crowd the crowd just wants a decision here and i don't blame yeah. them and plus they're showing a jordan shipley on the big screen oh yeah <laughs> yeah but you know I just look at this thing economically and I understand the Aggies were upset and about uh, feeling like Texas was getting preferential treatment within the Big 12 but I think it's one of those old adages keep your friends close keep your enemies closer you have a great working relationship with Texas they'd actually discussed doing a network together some years ago and A&M was not interested in that at, at the time. Um, but I think there's there's opportunities in this conference to grow the business, start doing some things like the big the Pac-12 is doing. Maybe start doing a little regional, maybe do a North Network, a South Network, start growing some of that revenue for your member institutions. One more look here. Shipley stepped at about short of the first down. Yep. The yard short of the first down, so probably going to bring this one back and find out exactly where it was. This game is uh, ground to a halt yeah, here. Suddenly. They shouldn't take this long. I mean, that, that was a pretty clear. Well, what they may be trying to do is make sure they got time right and all that. But let's get an accurate guess and move on. A lot of good news when you look at uh, Texas athletics of late. Uh, the World Championships of track and field over in Daegu, South Korea right now. Uh, Trey Hardy, the world champion in the decathlon, a resident of Austin here. And... Uh, Saw a shot of uh, Aaron Ross, former DB for Mac Brown several years ago. His wife and faster, better half, Sonia Richards Ross, a uh, member of the 4x400 gold medal winning relay team yesterday for Team USA, world renowned 400 meter runner. And they are trying to figure out what the clock situation is. And of course, uh, see that abounds right there at the 46. So eight, call it 809 or 810. But of course, Marquise Goodwin, who would have been a receiver on this year's team for Texas, uh, preparing, trying to make right. the uh, U.S. team for the London Olympics in 2012. After further review, the runner stepped out at the 44 and a half yard line. It's third down. Please reset the game clock to 8-10. 8-10. You heard the reset. We'll go back to 810. And uh, it's interesting looking back around some of the other coaches, what they think. ESPN the magazine doing an interesting poll of college football questions and getting some interesting, intriguing answers. So we'll let you know about that in just a few moments. I'll let you speculate and guess about who they thought was the best player in college football. I'll tell you who I like. I like that Robert Griffin the third guy last yeah, he night. He looked okay, didn't he? <laughs> Brown on the carry and gets the That's first a down run for a freshman. Yeah, broke a tackle, cutting it inside to pick up three. And you don't see this much with young running backs. Watch the patience and the cut. You know, so many guys in high school can just outrun and outpower anybody, but this is this is nice. Watch as he gets the outside, cuts back underneath, and knows exactly where he needs to get to. That that looks like a third, fourth year player, not a true freshman. Boy, those are nice instincts. That's a good one's come through the doors here in Austin. First and ten. And off again, and this is Brown. And this is why the crowd holds its collective breath when he touches the ball. He's got the it factor. Callahan finally making the tackle. And a 20-yard gain. You know what he is? He's slippery. He's a big guy, 220 pounds. But watch when he gets around the line of scrimmage, how he's just constantly shifting his shoulders and moving. And boy, he's, he really sees, he, he sees very well. He's got excellent vision. That's something that uh, Major Applewhite and I were visiting a little bit yesterday. And um, they're excited about this young man. You're starting to see why. Tenth play of the drive coming up. 
approaching seven minutes to go. Brown again into the boundary. Got about a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Wasu making the stop on the play. And back to that ESPN, the magazine. Top choices who win the BCS. They say Alabama. Andrew Luck, best player, best coach. Gary Patterson, 35 bowls. About right. Should players be paid? Yes, the answer. What do you think? What number out there the most jumps off the page at you? What do you find most surprising? 53% I thought would be higher for they should be paid. Really? I know most coaches get frustrated that they're, and, and I, paid is, doesn't mean $100,000, $200,000. It means, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month in their right. pocket. I, every coach I've ever talked to supports that. That's complete. Of course, there's been a lot of talk about players getting an additional stipend and making it comparable and appropriate to the time they put in. It's a complex argument. I'm not sure exactly how you implement something like that. Two men moving and did not reset. Five yard penalty. Three times tonight? Three. Yeah, that's a trifecta. You know, I, I, if you're Mac Brown, though, I think you'll take those. First game, an entirely new complex offense, an entirely new complex defense. Yeah, they had fits and starts in the first half, and maybe it won't be quite uh, the score that they expected, but Rice is a much better ball club than people know. And uh, frankly, in the second half, they, I think they've made some nice strides. On second and 14, Gilbert. The screen, boy, great catch underneath by Whitaker. And he's got a little room. Fuzzy touchdown. You're going to run the screen. You need some big guys out front. David Snow, the left guard, sneaks out. Watch this cut block right on the leg. I know that looks bad, but completely legal on Josh Skinner. Landed the locker on that leg, but good job by Snow getting out there and getting Skinner down. If he doesn't, if he's not able to cut him, that's a gain of maybe a yard or two, not a touchdown. Fozzie Whitaker, you saw it with his first career touchdown catch. A young man whose alter ego is Captain America. Looked like a superhero on that run. Even got the shield. It? Are you going to sing it? <laughs> Next week. <laughs> we'll be back for that BYU game. That's what we call a tease in the business, and that's a heck of a run. Well, those upside down frowns. Now smiles, of course. Uh, Texas leading 34 to 9 as the offense has ignited here in the second half. Well, that, that'll work. That will work. Again, you know, uh, it, it's hard sometimes to you go all through spring. And, you know, it's funny, Mac Brown, we were asking the coaches especially with the offense how did you get that much in and, and and Mac said you know I was a little concerned when I knew how much stuff Brian Harson wanted to put in he said but he just does it in such a methodical way and the, 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 the guys just get it quickly and they're able to do that stuff and I think I think the package will start to expand a little bit but we started to see a taste of that didn't yeah, we? yeah. Jackson Shipley Wildcat Fozzie Whitaker Wildcat you Mike Davis dynamic deep threat Yard deep. And Ross will take it at the 20 yard line. Rice, meanwhile, picked to finish fourth in Conference USA and uh, look at the breakdown of their Texas contingent. 85 players from the state. And, and David Bailiff, when we were talking to him the other day, you know, Rice is kind of like a Stanford, it's an internationally known academic institution. So they could recruit a bigger base. and this state, the state of Texas, produces on average four to 500 FBS level college football players. And in Houston alone, it's well over 100 every year. And he said, you know, we're going to go after the guys who get offered by Kentucky or some of the smaller SEC schools and say, why don't you just stay home and play here? And they've, and they've made it work. Out of bounds, gain of about four yards by Tyler Smith. Interesting that uh, you talk about it being a world renowned institution. It's a team with a pretty good collective GPA. They're, they've got 11 engineering majors. <laughs> it's been a lot of time uh, 
figuring out how to split Adams there. Yeah, well, we, we talked about Travis Bradshaw. Unfortunately, the senior safety had to shut his football career down because he actually broke his neck. He is not paralyzed, but he did break his neck in camp. And here's a young man who's going to have a chemical engineering degree at the end of this year, already starting to look for what's going to be next in his life. So, pass complete. And you know David Bale said first down. Oh, sorry Mark he, he made a really interesting point. He said you know in most schools you recruit a kid who's worried who's making a decision for the next five years of his life. We have to recruit young men who are making a decision for the next 50 years of their life. And you talked about those satellite camps that they do uh, all over Texas and I'd never heard anyone doing that for a school like Rice. What a smart way to spend some money to go out and get some recruits. Toss into the boundary and Tyler Smith, one of those Central Texas kids, coming up short, stopped by Steve Edmond. A loss of one on the play. It's interesting. You know, Rice has scored a touchdown in 76 consecutive games, but the last time they haven't scored one, you'd have to go back as far as 2002. And right now, that uh, that streak in danger of ending right now. And into punt is Boswell. Pardon me, it's Martins. Jackson Shipley, with his heels perched on the 26 yard line. Fair catch of the 35 yard line. Will be first down and 10 after the 37 yard punt. Well, the Backbound Radio Show on the Longhorn Network comes Wednesday at 7 o'clock Central Time. Put your eyes on Texas. Well, at this point, do you let uh, Garrett Gilbert go the rest of the way, or do you maybe give David Ash a chance, or even Case McCoy? Well, look, you, you played David Ash, and I, I think you have said that he's your backup. But now Case McCoy comes running in. You know, if you were going to play Ash in those series in the first half and a couple of series ago, I'm, I'm not sure why he wouldn't be in the game now to get him some reps with a full offense. Ace McCoy now hands it off and there's a fumble. Loose ball. And Rice recovers the ball at Texas's 34 yard line. Dylan Clare recovering the loose ball. Well and, and this is what happens you know you always hear about the center quarterback exchange but this one McCoy gets it. And that's that's on the running back. That's a well, that's a freshman. The ball was put right where it needed to be. He didn't clamp down on it properly. Uh, take that back. Part of that may go on McCoy because you tell the quarterback that ball has to be ripped out of your hand by the running back, and he may have let it go. But uh, looked to me like it was good placement on the ball. Hit him a little high in the pads. Good field position here for the Owls. The guard drills one, mm -hmm. and that should have been caught. Incomplete. Trevor Cook dropped it. Yeah, and he had himself a first down. Yeah, and that was one of the frustrations for David Bailiff, remember, in the first half. He told Samantha down on the field, you know, we've just too many drops. Too many drops. Second and ten. On the slant oh. incomplete and dropped again. Mm. That time Michael Patterson the culprit. Boy, they got to give Bogart yeah. a little bit of help. Yeah, he's he's putting the ball in some pretty good spots. First game, you know, yeah. first game for both teams. But uh, they're going to have to get that fixed because I, I think they have a pretty good quarterback. You know, you look at a league full of quarterbacks. Case Keenan at Houston. G.J. Kenny at Tulsa. There's just some great quarterbacks across this league, and I, I just have a good feeling about McCard. McCard, that time behind his intended receiver, Gotro. And it's fourth down coming up. Texas on the verge of barring a miraculous comeback. Winning 40 of the last 41 against Rice. And Garg in the game still. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Why not? And I think, remember, this guy, just a sophomore, only played three or four ball games last year. I like leaving him in to get experience. Has protection, but now on the run. 
slings it. A catch made by Kubiak. And it's a yard short, though, of the first down. And the Longhorns take over on downs after the nine yard gain. Overall, a pretty stout job by Manny Diaz's defense tonight, allowing just three field goals and no touchdowns. What, a, what an impressive guy Manny Diaz is. Started in our business, yeah. actually. Started as a production assistant at ESPN and got done with two years and decided he wanted to be a coach. And right now, one of the hot young coaching prospects on the college football landscape. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. That was 1962, Rice Stadium. President John F. Kennedy outlined his reasons for sending Americans to the moon and increasing the U.S. involvement in the space exploration. In his speech, Kennedy quoted saying, hey, why does Rice play Texas? And uh, NASA's headquarters in Houston, later renamed the Johnson Space Center. Let's look at the series note. And the numbers decidedly in Texas's favor. I think the present point was, uh, when Rice plays Texas, it's a challenge. It's a challenge <laughs> you want to try and take on. Yep. And you know what? Rice has got nothing to be embarrassed about with what they did today. Um, the score is going to end up about the same as it was last year. But I think Texas is better than they were last year in the first ball game. Uh, and I think Rice is much better. Uh, think about those drops, the muff punt. You clean some of that stuff yeah. up. They Two may still lose back to back. Exactly. They may still lose this game. But I'm telling you, sitting with David Bailiff, he, he really loves coaching at Rice. He loves the young men that he's able to recruit there. We showed you earlier, he's got 85 guys from right here in this state making up his roster. Um, really building a nice program there at Rice. It reminds me a lot of what they have at Tulsa. Boy hands it off to Malcolm Brown, and Brown gets another first down. The last time that Rice defeated Texas, he'd have to go back to 1965. 20-17 to 17 to score in that game. Leaving Malcolm Brown in, I think, again, it's a lot like McHard. You've got a young guy. You, you've got him lathered a little bit. Let him shake off that fumble from the uh, series before. I mentioned that win by Rice that was in Austin. Under two minutes to go. And Brown again between the tackles. Case McCoy in the ball game. And uh, Mac Brown said, you know, going back and reflecting on last year, of course, Hindsight is always 2020. He said that he would have given this young man a couple more opportunities yeah. in light of the way that the year played out. You know, I think you you look back at last year, and then Coach Brown was very honest with us in our meeting yesterday. A lot of self-reflection, a lot of questions about things they did, and took a really honest approach. And he said a lot of it was because once they lost a and they weren't going to a bowl game. And he said, oh, well, I've got a month to think about all this. And... Um, I think he did one of the more honorable things I've seen in coaching in several years. He didn't start looking for coaches until the bowl season was over. Once he decided and he, he talked to a few of his coaches who were looking to retire, probably yeah. move on, and knew he wanted to make a couple of changes, and everyone wanted to make it like it, it was this big acrimonious thing, yeah. and it wasn't. It wasn't at all. It was a, a, a really clear plan. The circumstances really just came together. It was a great mm -hmm. confluence of timing Absolutely. that led to the turnover boy with the screen and Brown couldn't hang on to it but you know it's a funny story of how he ended up getting Brian Harson out of Boise State Harson a young man who uh, had never been outside was born and raised in Boise left after playing at Boise State to be a graduate assistant at Eastern Oregon and then went right back to Boise so he'd yeah. never lived anywhere else outside of Boise except for one year as a graduate assistant and it was actually Chris Peterson the head coach at Boise State who said you know Brian I think you ought to look into that Texas job yeah and January 7th was when he came down here to Austin visited and uh, 
Went back home in between and came back on the ninth. Two days later, and was on the J-O-B. Mm -hmm. He and his, his wife, all his family, they're all from Boise, and his wife, uh, and he came here on uh, January 7th. And, you know, you meet with Mac Brown, and you see this town is such a wonderful place to live. And said so they laid in their bed in the hotel that <laughs> night, and as much as it was difficult to... Uh, think about leaving Boise they said it just felt right it felt like the place we should go there's that uh, rugby style punt this one Ooh. not as good as the previous ones and <laughs> they Mac Brown said that, that he actually out. does it pretty well going to his left <laughs> yeah that's the last one to the left yeah. I think we'll see in 2011 well Tuesday afternoon folks get a live inside look at the Texas Longhorn practice as Mac Brown gets his team ready for the game against Brigham Young Texas football practice on the Longhorn Network Tuesday at 4 o'clock Central Time. I will not be tuning in to football practice. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, <laughs> football is the only sport that you practice 10 times as much as you play. Oh, uh, boy. You know, I, I, when I go out to practice, you I miss get pushing there. those sleds, man. Oh. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you get a flashback or two. Oh, right? you know, it, this time of year, uh, I'll tell you the story. <laughs> out of the shotgun. Oh, hard. And he got rocked, and it's on the ground. Texas with a chance to run this one back. And the tackle mm. on the play made by Tyler Smith. And that was a big hit on the play. Yeah, the only, you know, I, I, I played with Dave Craig in the NFL, who led the NFL in all-time fumbles. Dave had very small hands. I get the sense I didn't get a chance to shake McHarg's hands. But remember those balls earlier that yeah. were kind of coming out funny and that fumble there? I think he's probably got he got drilled a little here. bit smaller hands. This ball just comes out right away. And boy, he got nailed by Reggie Wilson. Well, that kind of underscores a point that Mac Brown made to us yesterday. Everybody talked about the inordinate amount of interceptions that Garrett Gilbert threw last year, 17, and they were one of the worst teams in the country in takeaway margin or turnover margin. Well. They didn't get many of those last year. Yeah, turnover margins both get and give. Hey, so tell me your story about. Uh, Do you know I, yeah. I I left the NFL in the mid 90s. Do you know that this time of year I still have nightmares that I'm late to practice <laughs> or I can't get my. It's amazing this game. Can't find your cleats. It, it gets into your bones in a way. I, I can't tell you how awful two a days are. It's it's just the worst. Bunch of years on the offensive line will oh. do that to you, huh? Hey, hey, partner, you got that championship ring from 1991 <laughs> with the Huskies. And a nice run here by Joe Bergeron. No, my nightmares are NFL related, oh, okay. not college related. Right. <laughs> Getting drafted by the uh, mid 90s uh, Arizona Cardinals was the problem. Uh, Mac Brown has this one cooked, glazed, and ready to be sliced as Texas will go on to win this one. Their debut in 2011, 34 to 9. 1 and 0 for the Longhorns moving forward. And their 22nd consecutive win against Rice in Austin. They'll get a chance to exhale, enjoy this one for a few hours, and then you know how coaches are, they'll obsess about BYU until they visit Austin next week in a game you'll see on ESPN2. Ozzie Whitaker with a couple of touchdowns tonight, one running, one receiving. Eric Gilbert, 13 of 23, passing for 239 yards and a touchdown toss. And for Rice, they get ready to play Purdue, and then uh, they get a week off after Purdue before they go to Baylor. And I know David Baylor frustrated, but they've got a lot to build on. Of course, the question mark coming out of this game for Rice is uh, the story on Sam McGuffey and his conspicuous absence in this game. I believe we only saw him touch the ball one time. Yep. And, uh, we knew they had a lot of bot backs that they liked, but McGuffey with that speed. Maybe, maybe there was an injury we didn't know about. You know, maybe they were concerned about that and didn't tell us. But uh, it certainly was odd that he was not in the ball game more. Well, it's all smiles for the guys in burnt orange tonight. Let's go downstairs to Samantha with Coach Brown.
coach, you were working with a whole new offense tonight. At what point did you realize that things were changing? A very different game in the second half. I thought when we came off the six inch line and went 99 and a half yards and scored, got a little confidence, came right back and went 94 yards and scored. Uh, then I thought we had a pretty good feel of what we were doing. I'm sure you know, but you were playing 18 true freshmen tonight, probably more than you ever have. What did you learn about those young guys tonight? Well, they're very talented, and, and they struggled some tonight where to line up and what to do, and we made a lot of mistakes, but they should be much better by next week. All right, congratulations. Go enjoy this one, Coach. Thanks, Sam. Back up to you, Mark. All right, Samantha. Well, Texas showed a lot of resilience. Uh, dealt with some adversity tonight. Rice had cut their lead to 13-9. to nine. But then they rallied with 21 consecutive points to go on to the final margin of victory and go up 1-0, 1-0 on the 2011 season. They've got BYU on their scope next, next week right here in Austin. Once again, the final score, it's all Texas 34-9. Texas game day final coming up next. For Ed Cunningham, I'm Mark Jones saying... Good night from Austin. This has been a presentation of the Texas Longhorn Network.